Germany, Belgium, Canada, and many European countries are putting through new legislation that will allow police to check your group chats and even put you in jail for memes deemed misogynistic. Now, can they do Apparently, this? a Belgian court has already put a politician in jail for messages found in the group chat. Now, is that every group chat? Because this phone was stolen and the perp may have started a couple group chats with some when you nutted, but she's still sucking memes. German police have already carried out raids on homes. Now, I actually bought this phone used and it might have come with some of the Women's March's Men's International Day of peace and quiet memes now how do i get them so off? if there was hypothetically a three billion women on the planet and it still isn't clean meme on here if the casing sustained hammer damage can that still be accessed now do we know how deep they will be looking because there might be a picture of a terrorist jumping out of a plane with a parachute because he saw a woman pilot and the caption says his work is already done here but i was actually researching things to get mad at now if i was holding 45 hard drives full of someone else's final boss of feminism memes can i be held liable if they were to be accidentally dropped on the ground do we know if gorlock memes count as misogynistic the boys the boys cast the lads the boys cast the dudes we pound ourselves The Boys Cast is back in studio, boys, 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 and <clears throat> lots of things to talk about this week. People are getting arrested for memes. Mm -hmm. Don Lemon's off Twitter. Don Lemon. Don Lemon. Don Lemon. Sydney Sweeney's the talk of the town. She's kind of always been. The blue man like you. Just we'd love to bury yourself in those. Man. When I die, bury jug me man, between man, a pair man, of tits. <laughs> you have always been a jug <laughs> man. But more importantly. There's a Dear Kiki, you know, if you're familiar with Dear Kiki. I don't know who Dear Kiki is. But someone Tell wrote us. in to Dear Kiki and said, How do I talk to my boyfriend about pegging? Our relationship's been far from heteronormative, if you will. <laughs> and they're not happy about that. So I'm going to answer for Kiki. And what you do is you want to sit him down. But then you take a dildo and you put it on the chair. And then he goes, what the hell? And he goes, what, what the hell is this? He goes, that's actually the reason I want you to sit down. <laughs> what? Now prepare yourself. What about a chair? Did did you like that? What about a regular chair, chair, but with a hole in it? So you sit down and nothing is afoot as you're just sitting on a regular chair. And then some sort of hydraulic thing pushes a dilly up and you go, what? Or you have someone underneath, yeah, pushing it through. Sort of you hire like a day laborer. Yeah, yeah you go on Jiffy or something. You, you, just hire <laughs> you go on Jiffy, you hire a day laborer. You say, what you're going to be doing, you're going to be poking this dilly through the hole. And you go, see? <laughs> yeah, I see you. Oh. And you go, yes, through the hole. See you know you. what I didn't realize? You know when you go to ATMs? A lot of those ATMs actually have a Mexican guy inside of there that hands you your money. <laughs> There's like, I didn't think... You, I, you I didn't, didn't know that? I, I don't know. That felt to me like... <laughs> Just seems like a hard. You shouldn't be giving that pr job to a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would think that uh, that's like old school. How they used to like put uh, like little people inside of like costumes and stuff because yeah, R two D two. Ask like Jeeves that. used to be just a guy messaging you <laughs> the whole time. Uh, Did you know that? What that a scandal? Ask Jeeves was supposed to be like the early AI. Yeah. It was a dude at, who worked at Ask Jeeves. Like, <laughs> but it was a like search engine. He was binging it. What, he was just like answering a million questions at once? No, they had a whole bunch of them. Oh, they basically they, put their interns on that. I didn't know that. that well, it's like a not, scandal. That seems like the opposite of technology. Well, I think they had a lot of questions. That's what I'm saying. That, that's like the... <laughs> it's the Wizard of Oz is what it was. That's like the Elizabeth Holmes shit with the blood test where they go, okay, we're going to take this blood test. <laughs> yes. And then they just rip over to the CVS <laughs> to actually get it done. And they come back and they go, yeah, we got all your Zars. Like, that's amazing. That's legitimately, what was happening? They oh, had wow. a guy, every person had a name tag, said Jeeves. <laughs> very, <laughs> com very confusing during roll call. They had a bunch of these low level employees that asked Jeeves, and they're just, their computers were smoking, and they're just. <laughs> really? And they were answering questions. That apparently, I have never heard. Well, because apparently he couldn't answer a lot of the questions, so people had to do them for them. Yeah. So well, it was like fake AI. I don't remember using Ask Jeeves very much. I do remember using it at some point, though. The girl says she's tired of gender roles. For instance, is pegging really tied to gender roles? Oh, this is, sorry, this is the answer. The uh -huh. answer says if you're tired <laughs> of gender roles. Yeah. Uh, then the conversation may be about your feelings about gender roles generally. That's, if, you, if you're with a chick mm -hmm. and she's like, hey, I want to talk about our sexual situation. Sure. And you go, it's, and you it's go what's good. the problem? You go, this whole you're playing the guy thing, I'm playing the girl <laughs> thing isn't working for me. <laughs> How do you feel about... That's the thing, too, is pegging does... 
nothing for the woman. <laughs> you just hear, and he goes, what's that? You go, that's the switch up, Harn. You go, we're going to be what? switching things up. Go, I don't want to do well, that. Well, listen, this entire time we've been together, I've been playing the girl. It's like, she's sort of saying it's like a cops and robbers situation. Sure. I'm tired of being the cop. Sure. Oh. Like the, like <laughs> I want to be the robber robbing you of your anal virginity. Again, I don't know what a woman gets out of that. Like, I, I could see a scenario where... She gets where the, you getting humiliated. I guess, the humiliated. But, like, I, I think in most pegging scenarios, the guy's like... So, you know, could we maybe, like... I'm thinking of, you know, exploring the bedroom. And she's like, oh, what are you thinking? Like, maybe role-playing? He's like, no, you peg me. I know that's what most of them are. A guy that was like, listen, I'm not out here trying to be gay, but this is the next <laughs> best thing. I'm not trying to be married to a dude. However, no. we can meet in the middle, you strap just... this puppy on. I am understanding of that. Uh -huh. In this situation, this girl had read one too many blogs and being like, well, I am, you know, why I am, why am I doing the gender roles? Right. Oh, I have to be the girl every single yeah, time. Yeah, just hear so I'm him. the one getting fucked just because I'm the woman. Oh, you know, you know she would be <laughs> using that energy. She, that on. type of chick too would be using that against the guy <laughs> all the time. You know, like if the fact that she's like she'd be telling up everyone the, too. Oh, she'd be telling every yeah, like at just <laughs> she, a casual. She'd scenarios. be starting a fucking Instagram account, Pegger Girl 45 <laughs> dinner parties. The just tales like, of pegging. Yeah, Terry likes to get pegged. Terry's been fucking taking it. Terry's Notice how Terry's been walking funny yeah. lately. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not the only one walking funny in this, uh, this is a relationship. Terry, tell him. Oh, really? Tell him. Anytime Terry doesn't want to talk about Terry's like, about no, anything. no, I just heard my ankle doing squats <laughs> at the gym. It's definitely not... Uh, no, you did squats with Jim, which is the name <laughs> of my strap-on. Big Jim. Big Jim. <laughs> Jimmy John. Yeah, you don't, you don't like it when big is uh, on the front of that word. Well, you definitely don't yeah, want big go, in the front oh, of that. a regular one? <laughs> Well, I think that's what happens, though. And you are right that she's probably every time they're out with friends, she's like, she's like, I want to go home. And she's like, I don't want to go home. And he's like, really? You want to start something? <laughs> well, interesting. Maybe I enough. tell everybody that you like to get pegged. You go, I don't like to get pegged. <laughs> oh, you did I it. I did it for you. <laughs> yeah. I did it because I love you. That is crazy, though. The guys probably like save the relationship. Like chicks will get pregnant and dudes will be like, take a peg in. I think that's a very specific very type rare, of guy. Yeah. You got to be such a simp bitch. Because don't forget, that if exists. your girlfriend's reading all the fucking magazines and being like, I shouldn't have to be the woman of every single time. You got bigger problems on your hand. You think yeah. this is the only thing she's coming up with? Uh, she wants you. Point. She wants you walking around broom in one hand, vacuum in the other hand, making, broom going making up the her ass lunch. at some point. <laughs> broom, broom stick in the ass. You're making her lunch with the other hand. This is not the pegging is not the only thing that's going to be changing in your Crazy relationship. Crazy to start at that though. That's kind of you'd think the end of a natural progression versus being like, hey, we're gonna. I don't like how things are going here. Dynamic wise, let's start shot. with pegging. You're like, no, <laughs> no, let's start with crocheting. How about this? I'll, I'll let me try vacuuming. If yeah. you want to switch, if you need to switch the gender roles, I'll fucking take the broom. And then she walks in, your dick's in the vacuum. She goes, What are you doing? Goes, I don't know. I've never vacuumed before. Is this not I how you do it? I had questions. <laughs> I was curious. <laughs> is this not how you do it? And then good news for Danny. Women are loving men who embrace the baby girl vibe and they ditch their toxic masculinity. So this is something I'm that- I'm a bit of a baby girl. You've been <laughs> you yeah. have been experimenting with the baby girl vibe. It's like baby girl vibe and it's like, t you know, the most famous actors in the world who are also very attractive guys. This is what they baby. always do. Oh, they're the baby girl. You're like, yeah, these guys. Hey, I'm not trying to go too deep show into me this Danny, article. Show me Danny DeVito in a romper <laughs> and tell me, that, tell me that Danny DeVito in a romper is doing baby girl stuff for you and then I'll be like all right yeah exactly if that's doing it for you then I'll go okay exactly it's, it's all hot girl with a freckle in a weird place. Yeah, it's like the grossest guy they got was Pedro Pascal, for their example. Exactly. He was just wearing like a weird ov red overcoat. Yeah, show me you sucking off a homeless guy in a dress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lord knows there's no shortage of them around here. <laughs> A man who is baby girl comes across the street, charming, a bit bashful. You're known to be bashful. What? <laughs> you go, uh, hey, what, me? Do you what do you mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> bashful. <laughs> <laughs> Seemingly in touch with his feminine side, ready to talk about his feelings, carry a purse maybe at some point. Even purse has kind of had like a moment where dudes remember like dudes like all the hood guys we knew were all like the rapper dudes. And the well, they were wearing the ones that were sort of like go around the yeah yeah, but they were kind of they, like, they were they, bags they were, yeah yeah they were bags, but they were kind of inching towards purses. There was like I think hip hop dudes where they're like getting those uh, Birkin bags, but that was mostly because they cost like a hundred grand. Yeah, and they give them to their girlfriend. That's the that's the original oil uh, the, the cartel is Birkin. They you know the, all those. 
fancy companies they like they cut off the supply you know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah they burn sure. they burn all the extra supply that's like Hermes like with an their, oil cartel with their dumbass scarves that you is use. that what they do yeah they like, only release a certain amount a year yeah they're just like fancy scarves and they're like fifteen hundred dollars a scarf but you just can't buy that many well according to this article it's exactly what men want women to become the antithesis of to- toxic macho masculinity so they're sort of talking about Danny here the trend of signals a sharp departure from the uber masculine sex symbols such as Ryan Long and the previous generations <laughs> and go- <laughs> looks more to the light bashful Danny Polish Chuck. Yeah. hey that's how it goes I'm a baby girl I can't imagine any of those guys are like can you not refer to this style as baby girl like they're probably like <laughs> see the this article the next day and then they call their stylist and they're like yo what the fuck they're calling me a baby girl <laughs> hey brother yeah, yeah, you don't have a motorboat but you can float your boat <laughs> yeah. and baby girl you're like not what I was going for here and it all boils down to the same point because we're not going that deep into this like I said it's just funny to mention but yes there is a demographic of girls who are going to smash the androgynous guy and to be honest I could probably get that type of girl that might yeah. be up in my alley yeah, you however, get a little eyeliner however there's only a certain amount of them mm-hmm. and I think there's a lot of dudes filling the baby girl demographic now yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot there's, of guys being like oh there's girls who like dresses like yeah probably 10% of them are into that or maybe 8% of them let's say and there's more than 8% of oh, guys supplies trying way too to get high. the supply of baby girls is not matching the actual demand from women of the baby girl men yeah yeah and guess who guess and- who's, guess who is filling that demographic one rich dude who's a successful artist yeah. wearing the baby girl outfit is smashing 20 yeah, of those yeah, girls. Yeah, so yeah, we're yeah, talking exactly. one to 20. Yeah, even if there was a perfect amount of supply, it still wouldn't It's work a polygamous out. demographic as well, right? Yeah, it's uh, Pareto distribution. Pareto distribution to the max, man. Yeah. There's one, you know, one fat slob wearing a dress <laughs> with a pearl <laughs> necklace on trying to get some, you know, androgynous uh, bartender trim. I actually saw a guy do a really funny joke. I think it was like a Brooklyn guy and I can't remember his name, but he put it online. So Brooke you can say it yeah Brooke but he, he basically out. said and i kind of related to it because he said that he goes everyone always says that you'd be like a you know a Al- like a alabama or arkansas f- f- uh 10 but you'd be like a new york seven yeah and he's like i'm the opposite whereas like i'm like a new york eight and i'd be a like arkansas too oh. <laughs> where it's oh, like boy. i gotta see that too i think i would be way mer- worth way more to girls in the city city people demographic. Yeah, I mean, you're, well, you're a city guy. Right. Where it's if I go to somewhere like when I grew up at school, the the like guy who got all the girls was not like the captain of the football team. At my school we didn't even know who the captain of the football team yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, Canadian, I still do not. Canadian colli- high school collegiate or uh, sports. But I'm sure not. in New York it's a bit like that too. Probably yeah. captain of the basketball team's doing okay for oh, himself. Yeah, in New York City? But I'm you know what I mean? I'm just saying though probably who does actually better is the guy whose kind of SoundCloud rap career is taken off some shit yeah, like that. Or just some sort of weird influencer. Exactly. You know, some sixteen year old influencer. Or kid. you know, whatever. Maybe the drug dealer or this whatever it is yeah, yeah. but it's like i i do way better in a city than if you go to somewhere and you know that guy like oh that guy well you only have that guy skills. almost went to the show yeah, 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 and, yeah. <laughs> and everyone's bragging about him <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you only have city skills i do only have city skills i have a city look. I, I think if you're like in you know a more rural place you're just your toolbox is not i understand the di- dynamic of city girls too i go yeah. to some of those small towns i don't even know what those girls are on about no they're all just on their <laughs> fucking dipping and shit and- <laughs> On their sleds. <laughs> I actually do do better than baby girl demographic. Yeah, you are. You're closer to baby girl. <laughs> Ryan's a baby girl. I actually am not a baby girl, and I've, I've, I'll put it this way. I don't think I've. This is. I've only dated a girl that uh, girls that I know that might be into like men that are like that is just girls that liked guys that were like musicians. Yeah, for sure, exactly. Which but, like you know like, what I like mean. These baby girl actors, you're like, yeah, they're just dressed kind of like musicians. Yeah, but I don't know a ton of girls who are super into guys that are like drama kids with a dress on. That's true. Yeah. Like uh, girls that are into like band dudes is not. They're not looking for like a feminine dude in that sense. No, no, no. They want a high status kind of. They want a high status who, dude. Who is like a little wacky. Who's artisty? Yeah, artisty and is willing right. is willing to like doesn't care what people think. I and a drug even, addict. <laughs> and a drug addict. Yes, real strung out. <laughs> ideally on heroin. Exactly. Yeah, but they want tattoos on his neck, but he pretends to be sensitive. So in his when he sings his songs. <laughs> yeah, I mean tattoos, neck tattoos, are, say a lot. They do. They do. So I don't know. if did we, we didn't. I don't think we talked about this. We were going to talk about it last week on our Patreon.com slash the Boys Cast. New episode every week. Two Bugman episodes. Sign up. 
Putin plans to weaponize deep fake, deep fake porn against Western democracies and female leaders. This is a lot of people are saying that one of the big plans for Putin is they're going to use this deep fake technology to make porns of all these pri- uh, female politicians to bring them down. Jokes on him because in Canada they're making that stuff illegal. Sorry, Putin. Nice try. <laughs> yeah, nice try. But I <laughs> just want to say like, no. Nope. On behalf of America, don't. I don't think it's gonna. It's not gonna change the elections. You don't want to make it. We don't want to watch it. No one needs to see uh, Elizabeth Warren gagging on ten dudes' do- uh, documentary. AOC might do something. You know, imagine a squad gangbang. There's a few, and I'm sure that they've already done tons of AOC. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna tell you the top. She's ten. kind of the only one. Top ten oldest women currently in American Congress. So we got Jen J- Jan. Jan Shakowski. Okay. Take a peek at that. Tell me if you need to see it. Woof. Some, you think that's going to bring down democracy no. by putting that in a sex scene? Heavy filters. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, oh, Virginia Fox. Looks like my grandmother. You think Putin, Putin, you don't need to do this. Virginia is a fox. I don't know. <laughs> Danny wants, you're saying you would, you would like to see her fox style. <laughs> do you really, really need to see a swallowing scene by Virginia Fox? Nah. I don't know how that Virginia hurt. Fox's I don't know how that man hurt comes in political aspirations though. Step brother, <laughs> step grand. See grand, if, any, if anything, born. what you need to do is you need to do like a deep fake of her, but younger and like you know it's like a sepia kind of like black and white. You go, could you believe this shit she was up to in the fifties? Like maybe you know, yeah. and then that's how you do. You go uh, like a real deep. Not a bad point. Yeah, you got. If look, you're listening it's to like an older leak, you can't get them now. I don't think Rosa Deluro is going to be doing the damage to the uh, to societies you nah. think by taking those tits out. No, I mean first Maybe, of all, but, but you're going to need a lot of technology to get those drooping down to the floor. <laughs> by the way, I'd like to apologize for Ryan's uh, just innate sexism by thinking that only women will get deep faked. You think Ted Cruz is going to oh, have a fucking, fucking JOI? Oh yeah, <laughs> Ted Cruz doing a gay JOI video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they're going to get the guys. That's how they're going to do it. Because he's so Putin's so against homosexuality. That's the ultimate weapon. Beto O'Rourke just going skiing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know that's what they're going to get. Or like maybe uh, Pete Buttigieg. Because if he has a gay thing, you go like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it would he's make gay, sense, right? And they'd be like, yeah, I can see that. Kay Granger is that doing it for you? <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> Not a lot for Kay Granger. Uh, All right, now we're getting. Uh, that one was actually okay. Okay, I skipped by. Yeah, I'm just fucking. Anna Eshoo is not that bad for fucking being pretty old. Yeah. 1942, she was born in. Yeah, this is a 70 year old. 72. Frederick Frederica Wilson is not not doing much for me. I don't no, think you're going to be fucking nice bringing, hat though. I don't think you're going to be bringing down the Western the Empire. Pelosi, Pelosi people might like. I think people over fifty, I could see liking the Pelosi one. But yeah, the bottom line is save yourself the trouble. I don't think it's going to do the damage. You do not need to put your folks on this. You got enough things going on in Ukraine. It's all it's going to do is gross everybody out. Yeah, but I mean, I'm you're going to gross the people out, and you're going to make Russians be grossed out. There's going to be puke all over your fucking. The question is mainframe. Yeah, what's the effort required to do this though? Like the what's the ROI here? Like, do they just need one eighteen-year-old Russian kid? I honestly think you take like, Hillary Clinton and you're just like, "Hey, we're gonna make her suck a dick," and it's like for some reason the Avatar is just resisting it, <laughs> and you go, "None of our technology can make her jerk off," and she's just like, "Can we get her without a face?" Like, no matter how much technology they put into her, she still just grabs the give it and gives it a sad hand job. Like, is that the new like Cold War? Is just like that Russia does that and America goes, yeah. Well then, we're gonna do you being all gay, Putin. How's that sound? <laughs> you they're gonna be true. drop. They're gonna be dropping like just v- videos and stuff. Like, out <laughs> pretty of just, funny. Like, Air dropping them into Moscow. <laughs> it's pretty just funny. Just like a, like nudie mags and it's all just Putin. It's just every box. every news in every city you turn on. It's like, oh, Xi Jinping is sucking off a dude, and then and then they have like, oh, Biden has been cranking one out in public. And then you cut over to Russia. It's just yeah. like Elizabeth Warren. Suck more dick again. And then, oh, there's all these fake videos. There's one of Hunter Biden having sex with two. Th- oh, no, that one's real. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Danny cannot be stopped. This is a man with principles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gross, though. We don't. <laughs> Obviously, that's gross. We're not putting the tube uh, or the toothpaste back in the tube on this one, unfortunately. You think Granner's going to be out here? Showing it? I guess. I don't know. I guess the thing is, th- these aren't things that people want to distribute, though, really, right? Like, there's no... Like, if... if if it can't be a big market for that. No, and I... Th- like, it's not, like, all the... Because, obviously, all the corporate press is basically, 
you know, uh, not in cover cahoots it. with the government. Yeah, so they're not going to they're gonna make it disappear. Dictates the narrative. So if they had it dropped on their desk, I mean, they're not. If it was real, they wouldn't publish it. And if it's fake, they're definitely not publishing it. Seems yeah. Well, well, it just seems like okay, you're going to put it on the internet. It's like I don't really see how that's going to have a big uh, impact in democracy. No, hell no. Unless, so I'll tell yeah. you what, it might not even be really something that's happening that much. It might be more like alarmist people here being like, oh, Russia's. That's the worry of all the things they could do. That's what I'm saying. They're not worried, though. Oh. This is them being like, look how bad Russia is. They're going oh, yeah, to yeah. fucking take our politicians and show their tits, among other things. They I, hate women. I mean, they could be literally making like deep fakes of Biden saying like crazy shit that people can't actually like differentiate between real stuff and and people will share that shit you know how but they are I, gonna do that and he's gonna have his dick out dude you know how many twitter accounts i follow where they're like they'll post something be like look what's going on and then you click on it and there's a community notes and there's from 10 years ago and you're like why why are you even posting this to begin it does with? seem to have all you're doing is for just engagement baiting or whatever and i guess to just make money off of twitter like the whatever few dollars like it basically basically pays nothing anyways and then but you're like you're purposely doing like you knew this engagement was, masturbating i guess but you, <laughs> you knew this was a lie and you're just posting it just to drum just to anger people or whatever like you know yeah make the little be like, look money. at what's going on at the border can you believe this and then the video like the thing is like yeah this was from 2012 <laughs> okay why are you showing black this? and white yeah but you're like why are you posting this now there's not enough good shit happening but you're yeah that's the answer is they probably just have someone like go find far you know what actually happens is one person posts it and then the other people just look at all the other ones and then copy them they go oh this went viral it's like you know what Le legitimately they're writing for like their blogs a lot of times on these twitter pages is like they look at they just go look at other people's things and what did good they post on theirs yeah exactly they just repost it so okay a lot of people are talking about Sydney Sweeney. She's taken over the internet by storm, and she was on SNL. Uh -huh. And Danny's a boob man, and I've never been a boob man, so that's why I'm not this a crazy is boob man, to be honest. What? I mean, I like him. More of an ass man. I feel like you're revising history. I've never. Been I feel like you've. Oh, that's always been your thing. Never. No. Boobman. Boobman. Boobman and Boobman. No. I. I mean, I like him. I'm. Well, I thought you were going to sort of represent the other red side. Red-blooded American. <laughs> But I'm not like I don't. Uh, it's not like a requirement. Well, do you like them? Here, here's the question: Do you prefer them over small ones? Ah, uh, yeah. I well, know. that's the definition of a boob. But man. I don't. But I don't care. I, no, I don't like. I guess I have no. What do you mean? Well, all things being equal, they're never all equal usually. But I mean, all other things being equal, and you could just have a bigger rack or a smaller rack. Even still, a lot of times I see big boobs as an indication that this girl's gonna get fat. Mm. <laughs> if you see a girl that's normal size and she's got huge honkers and she's like 24, yeah, you put that girl at 37. Well, it's because the hormones. Those arms are going to start flapping, my friend. Yeah, well, that, that is a good point because you, you'd think that the hormones are kind of coursing through right now. A lot of fat in that body. There's the odd case where it's not the case, but. Yeah, yeah sometimes they just have big cans. Well, a lot of times you find out those cans are I mean, are in fake that arenas. regard, then sure, if all things being equal, but it's not something I would like seek out specifically. Like, I've never been like, oh, I'm not interested. I'm surprised to hear you say this, to be honest. I said I'm not it even. Before. I don't think you. I've, I've dated girls with small chests. I'm not like. It's not like the my the end all be all. I don't like a like a you know. I definitely don't like just like a flat ass though. That that is. I mean, the combination matters, obviously. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like but you I mean, don't, I don't obviously I don't mind them. Your least favorite's probably no. And then obviously, and fat. yeah, <laughs> and maybe a penis, but um, <laughs> you probably know, the least desirable. Too big, I don't like. I, I'll take too small over too big. Interesting. Yeah, just because <laughs> you know, I'd rather too small than too big. Well, there's this article. They came out, and a couple of people tagged us in it. That's why I wanted to bring this up. But it basically, there's a... Um, so it's Slate released this article, and a lot of people were saying they like Sydney Sweeney and the fucking cans. Uh -huh. And then they said, Sydney Sweeney's boobs are not that big. If anything, they're kind of average. Uh, I mean, don't we, can't we just actually quantify this? Uh, uh, we have to be able to. Okay, I'm gonna even before I even read it, I will I will tell based you the hypothesis. Based on appearance, I will say they are above average. No, the reason they're not is because people are monstrosities of fat in this mm. country. So they're kind of saying like, if you actually look at like what your average boob is, it's like yeah, those girls are 300 pounds. Yeah, but even still though, I see lots of bi like bigger girls and they don't have big. It d doesn't always necessarily translate because everybody puts on fat in different parts. Some girls you've seen they have small tits and they they are fat. Yeah, and They're some like girls, you units. see these girls walking around with these... Oh, massive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'd fucking put them over your shoulder like a continental soldier. Yeah, usually they're 
old ladies though, and they have just those giant. Okay, but they're the bringing up the like, average. They're like literally, yeah, I guess. Yeah, they're bringing up the average. That yeah. dude, girls that have small tits. Yeah. That like an average like skinny girl with like kind of small tits. Nine of her tits are probably one of those girls' tits. Well, probably more. Do you know, it might be like 17. Mm -hmm. So that girl cancels out 17 that's women. That's true. Up to one city, sweetie. So it's like, it's crazy. For her age, for whatever her age is, though, they're above average for sure. Because because obviously age well, this and, is and the thing. size. If you probably. said for her weight and stuff like that, yeah. you might be right. But that's not what they're saying, which is why this article is stupid. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah, they're stupid. saying cap the Oscars. Of, cap of the week right here. It is cap of the week. Cap of the week. Sweeney wore a... Uh, Marilyn Monroe inspired gown and by the looks no bra that is to say her boobs are small enough to be held in place beneath her plunging halter top with some professional grade boob tape which is not a thing most people with truly large breasts can say <laughs> so, you know what it is really like it's the dude writing an article being like I actually find Peter North dick small yeah. <laughs> Just normal, average fucking rod on that guy, you know? I actually, I mean, if you actually think about it. I mean, it, he wears regular underwear <laughs> just like I do. <laughs> Explain that. If he had a fucking real hog, he wouldn't even be able to be poking out at all times. He wouldn't even be able to fucking pop Explain it in there. Explain that. It's, yeah, li it's literally a girl who's fat kind of being like, yeah. I don't know what this girl looks like. But the only argument to be made is just like, yes, she, they're talking about of girls that aren't fat. They're pretty big. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's just nobody thinks that Sw sweeney's boobs are big in the way marilyn monroe is curvy yes in context but also no i was like yes marilyn monroe is curvy but this girl who's 700 pounds has curves as far as the eye can see yeah I, so I, many curves that if you look at her from far enough away she just looks flat <laughs> it's nonsense like nonsense the, like the I'm, lo I'm looking at her photo of the author you know what this girl is danny yeah a flat boober she's <laughs> <laughs> She's not a globalist. She's definitely she. <laughs> this is a flat boober, man. This is a conspiracy out here. Yeah, I bet she's a big. She probably likes prefers a nice Taylor Swift. She's a boob size denier. She's a boob size denier. I know. Why? What is the even the point of this? I think the point is is her. I think she's just trying to take. Like, who is this for? Is this for regular women? Like, is she trying to uplift regular women of all boob sizes? Is she trying to knock t uh, Sydney Sweeney down a peg? I. think think it's that right wing people liked it so she had to figure out how she didn't and uh, this is what she came up with Yeah, because this is a slate article i think that's what she did she kind of looked at it and she saw the you know the right wing twitter of the world yeah kind of being like which was it, which was like kind of a big troll to be honest because like, kind of kidding a little well, a lot of like i saw a lot of right wing twitter and they're like this is there was but like it seemed like they were a troll kind of like I don't just, think they were just like <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but they were they were uh, some of the things i was like oh they're just literally trying well it's to kind of trouble. funny it's just yeah. boobs is a funny convo exactly. you know what i mean <laughs> to be like boobs are back you're right it was just a little bit of a funny convo however this girl saw that and i think she was kind of like whatever's going on here i gotta I'm stop against, yeah. i'm against and she's like well what's the issue it's like everyone's saying they're big like well listen i'm sitting here with my three friends that look like a defensive line and you we're not we don't have fucking her size boobs ours are so big we have to wear two bras a piece <laughs> you know what's really crazy is that this woman who wrote also this, our floors have to be reinforced <laughs> She's a. She's also, a, if I wear moon shoes, they're just normal shoes because the springs all break. This woman's a journalist. Like mm. this is we're, we're talking about journalism right now. This is journalism she's doing. It's proper journalism. Pretty crazy. Like she's that like, is crazy. You're like, what do you do? You're like, I'm a journalist. You go, what was your last? What did you do? Go, Cindy I'm in boobs. She goes, big. I'm in Slate. You go, oh, that's pretty cool. What did you write about? I go. Sydney Sweeney's boobs aren't actually that big. <laughs> and goes, is there like a whole scientific thing? Like, is there papers you reference? She goes, no. I eyeballed it. I kind of just like my opinion. <laughs> so I eyeballed it. It's just like, you know, <laughs> editorial, I guess, stuff. I just basically just say it's not that big. You go, real fine journalism you're doing here. That is funny going to your like new, you know, after Slate inevitably shuts down and you're trying to get a job at the, you know, somewhere else, New York Times or whatever. Yeah, you know, like, your, yeah, your resume. <laughs> Dude, you're like, that resume is not going to get you fucking like working at McDonald's. You'd be like, what? When it comes to average breast size, the figure that was thrown around for American women is 34 double D, which is a little bit larger than people speculize her to be. But Sydney Sweeney's really are at the top of the size, aren't at the top of the size spectrum here. Or is it that she's a tiny blonde white woman? Mm, so she's getting, she's go. getting some of her stuff in here. Back to Slate's bread and butter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's yeah. getting into it right here. She goes, she thinks some of the issue might be that she's 
light. Yeah, I mean, we like. Uh, how would everyone feel here if the bo- and how would everyone feel here if the boobs weren't perky? She says. <laughs> I mean, how not perky, I guess. I was like, seeing a porn star's dicks being huge and be like, how would you feel if he couldn't get hard? And yeah. Like, yeah. I think people might like that less. First off, I think we've all <laughs> seen girls who have kind of not perky breasts and they, you know, they manage to just kind of hold them in, you know? Like, you can kind of, I you guess. You can tell that the skin looks like it's Yeah, yeah, it looks a little, but, but they thin, manage. They thin ma- skin. Yeah, they manage to just like get them in. You go, that still looks fine. With like in the context of wearing a dress or a shirt, like you sort of shove them in, like putting a yeah, taking a bunch of Jello and then you sort of yeah, yeah, put it exactly. in a bag and then yeah, exactly, and you squeeze the bag it. tight and put a yeah, pipe, pipe cleaner around it. That's right? what girls do. Yeah, their boobs. <laughs> but they look fine. You know, they managed to make it work. I guess maybe. So how would everyone feel if they weren't perky? <laughs> it was like, uh, again, I don't, huh? who's who's against that? I mean, like, I actually love them even if they were sloppy and gross. Yeah, so but like, again, yeah, how not perky? Hot, hot take. That she thinks that, yeah. And also, there's lots of, what, Eva Mendez, who's, uh... Furthermore, awesome she not- says. Yeah. Furthermore, <laughs> boobs come in shapes and sizes other than round. So now she's starting to get into a little bit of... Yeah, yeah, take. What do you think about that, white man? Yeah. You like those perky boobs? You like they nice, perky. Some of them How are oblong. Yeah. Newsflash. Bananas. <laughs> Newsflash. Some boobs look like you threw a ton of tacks <laughs> into a tube sock and you swing it around yep. in the gravitron bag of leaves <laughs> what about that how do you feel about that and guess what there's only four leaves in that bag of leaves <laughs> and it's a big ass parachute it's a f- <laughs> it'd be funny if this thing has just like a massive rack though potato sack with a couple of crumbled up pieces of paper that's what some boobs look like that's what that yeah i don't know she's just raging against the boobs i don't know why furthermore there's a lot of j- different of variations, ones. including teardrop, pendulous, east-west. If you want to understand this viscerally and perhaps a little more normal about your own boobs, you only need to look at Laura Dodsworth, project of a hundred photographs of boobs. Oh, this is what I was thinking of actually when she's talking about this. Yeah, where there's she, all. So the she's saying like what They're you all should like cartoony, be doing. Kind of like yeah, yeah. Here are all the different boobs. And what she's sort of getting at is that. Yeah, hey, this is hey, what newsflash, lady. People like symmetry. I hate fucking to be the bearer of bad news. Oh, generally people like symmetry above asymmetrical boobs. Well, like if you had a, just a perfect C cup breast, and then beside it is like an E banana. No good. No bueno. Sorry. You, you know might that, have ladies? one perfect one, but then the uh, the the bad one makes them both bad. And it's if you're like, lucky to get that the spoiled look, that- fucking elsewhere than Danny Polishuk's <laughs> t- mouth and lips, man. It's like the it's like the rotten fruit, you know. Have you ever taken spoils off, them all? Have you ever got brought a girl home, ripped off her shirt, and said, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> <laughs> What I go? What is going? You go. Excuse on. me. And then you pull out a mirror. You go. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> nah. I can't work with this. Okay. <laughs> That's what you try to say. You go. You're putting your chapstick on. You're like, <laughs> no, I can't. I can't work with. Gonna this. need a bigger chapstick. <laughs> Industrial so strength. Yeah. No, I'm, call yourself an Uber. I can't work with that. Do you yeah. know who I am? I'm one of the top titty suckers on this side yeah, of the country. Yeah, like, but it's so crazy because you're like, yeah, obviously, <laughs> I know. there's so many different types of breasts. Yes, yeah, some are better than others. Like, if you just, first off, it's not up to women to decide. You, I, I, bad news for you, ladies. Yeah, you don't get to decide That's what correct. guys what guys like. That you is just correct. Don't, okay, and if you put those in uh, opposed to like you know some seventy year old ladies floppers, yeah, almost a hundred percent of the time they're going to choose Sydney Sweeney. Sorry. And what they're saying is that's incorrect. That's incorrect. You guys are wrong. You guys. <laughs> it is very important at the boys cast to get your dicks hard. We're talking whoop, not whoop. We're talking. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about blue chew. You know that I've been a chew man. Game changer. I'm a chew man. Damn, Everyone damn, I know. Damn. Who has started to do chew yep. has not left chew. No, you're going to be happy with the product. No chew left behind. That's it is no chew. It is no chew left behind. We're talking about sex. Remember the days when you were always ready to go. Now 
You can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Actually, me, it was kind of the opposite, where I wasn't just, I was ready to go when I was younger. Sometimes, if anything, younger sort of was more stressful situation. That's a little bit sorted out, but I'm a chew man. Mm -hmm. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in a chewable tablet at a fraction of the cost. It is a fraction of the cost, yeah. my friends. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office. Anyone who's listening to the podcast know that we've had a few times going to the doctor's office where it was not a fun... A, one, no. of, one of them included a female doctor, up close and personal. Didn't even want to, didn't want to give me the prescription. <laughs> no. Told me that she goes, she thinks this might be a mental thing and she didn't want to give me a prescription. Choose the place to be. No awkward conversations. No waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA, prepared and shipped direct to your doctor in a discreet package. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover the options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code BOYSCAST at the checkout. You just pay $5 shipping. That is bluechew.com, promo code BOYSCAST to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the Boys Cast. And you know, we got to tell the people about Grinds. I've been on the street evangelizing for this. You know what? Give me one right now, Ryan. I've been telling people that I meet in normal life that you want to enjoy a grind. And not to be confused with grinder. Oh, these are the best. The salty caramel. Salty caramel is hey. good. I told you. Yeah, that's your favorite Baby. one. I brought these for you because you said you liked them and I have the big stack of them in my house. Yes, sir. Grinds is the shit. It's basically... Uh, so this one's 2x caffeine, so there's different caffeine levels. Oh, I'm buzzing, 50 milligrams. Ryan. I'm buzzing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, there's times later in the day where you're like, I don't need a full coffee. Yeah. You just want to take a little bit of a hit. Maybe you just don't want to have to. You're not Sometimes even, you're walking around. Yeah, you, you're walking around. You, you don't want to go you, get you one. Get the coffee, and then you're walking around. The coffee's spilling all over your fucking hands. Yes, and that's a big part of it. You're on a plane or some shit. People love pouches as well, too, yeah. right? It's fun thing to do. Mm-hmm. So if you don't know what grinds are, that's what it is. Small pouches of coffee and caffeine that helps you cut down on the bad habits which you might have you know some people might be vaping stuff like that or get Mm -hmm. to do too much of the other pouches and you want to get into the good pouches yes sir so that's one thing there it's a quick hit of energy use anytime anywhere so me and danny first found about it on tour and immediately we got some and went right to them and we go we this is one of the people we reached out to and we're like i love grind dude you gotta get us on the payroll (laughs) yes sir i've been telling people about it in real life before we no, it's awesome. official sponsors awesome on the product. boys cast so the uh, code is boys cast 20 when you go to get grinds.com and so you get a deal there and then also you can get them on amazon so use the code boys cast 20 uh to get 20 off on get grinds.com or amazon by the way do you know wiki how yeah. So they make these educational videos. Okay. Let me show you one of these. This is what this is what this company has been up to with educational videos. Getting an unexpected erection in public can be awkward, but there are ways. They so got like sort of a black. I guess that an Asian guy. You think? Uh, no. I would say that is black. Is a black guy? I mean, it's pretty dark. Really, it doesn't. Could he's, be Philip. The eyes his hair are, is kind of weird. Slanty enough. Yeah, they're circle eyes. Circle eyes. <clears throat> Hard to figure out what this guy is, but they. Do, I think that's the point. They're releasing these. Yeah, this you don't is get very smoke on purpose. If, <laughs> you spend so much time being like, "What the fuck is this?" This guy? is ambiguous, eh? Yeah. If this guy was a real human. He'd be booking a lot of commercials. Like he could be Hispanic. Although you said that the people weren't happy because you said white dudes were cleaning up at the Oscars. White people cleaned up at the Oscars. Yeah, it was a big win for the whites. I mean, it was just like Oppenheimer. I mean, it was just because Oppenheimer mm. won, and it was all white people. Oppenheimer cleaned up. Yeah, Cillian Murphy's the fucking goat, dude. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they're they're releasing these videos about what to do. What would it, what do you think you're supposed to do if you get an erection? Uh, jack off immediately. That's just what you're saying. Deal with the problem instead of just kind of kicking the can down the road. Well, in your case, uh, get the fuck out of this preschool. <laughs> <laughs> Scram. Run as fast as you can. Stop looking in this woman's window. <laughs> Don't press it up against Stop. The, don't press it up against the bus stop window. Danny Bullishuk's wishy <laughs> wiki out. When you get an erection in public, it's time to snop, <laughs> stop sniffing the ladies' panties yep. in the section of Victoria's Secret. Hey. ...to hide it. One method is to wear tighter underwear, like briefs or boxer briefs, that can hold down the erection. Hold it down, they're saying. Down. With That's a large f- object, 
such as a book or backpack. Put your bag Another in front of it. <laughs> is to wear a long shirt that hangs over your. <laughs> Some of these are so obvious. Like, do you really need a video to tell you to put a longer I'm, shirt on? <laughs> I love the. Yeah, you know, just hold the backpack completely opposite of the way it was designed at walking around your high school, and no kids. This guy looks like fucking <laughs> prime bullying just material right here. Just the way they set him up. He's wearing he's like covering his dick with a shirt, and then he's just walking from class holding the bag <laughs> backpack in front of them to go hey byron that's a weird way to be holding your backpack he goes no that's what the, all the cool kids are doing danny bullshuck why are you holding a change purse in front of your dick <laughs> everybody's like he's got a boner right now everybody look how he's holding his bag he's for sure has an erection and you're like what <laughs> it's insane that they make these videos or tie a hoodie or sweater around your waist to conceal the erection <laughs> crossing your legs or flexing your thighs can help draw blood away from the erection Applying something cold or going to your yeah, just also- ice your cock <laughs> in glass. This guy is putting a can of coke on his dick. <laughs> Good. Can you imagine? So you got a back, you got a backpack in front of you. You got a shirt tied over top. Yeah. You got a long shirt over that. You're fucking pumping your legs <laughs> to try to get blood out of it, and then you got a coke can on your dick. <laughs> <laughs> Not in science work. class. Just throw in the kitchen sink at this right now. You go. I'm doing <laughs> all of these at once. Reduce the erection. Light exercise can be helpful as well. Go for if a bike. Else imagine. Else <laughs> <excuse> <laughs> like, really? To isn't it easier to just go jack off than go for a bike ride? <laughs> what was the last one? He's in the toilet now. To calm down naturally. He says, "Hide in the toilet till it goes down." Have any uh, tips on what to do <laughs> in said toilet? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you're like so just like you don't have no idea and you're just sitting in the toilet like you got there and you're just like all right let's just get rid of this thing just nope not yet I wish there was something I could do <laughs> that would expedite this problem how is tucking not one of the options tucking in the waistband it's the obvious one but that's the thing to- it's the, that one should have been number one I think they don't want to be held liable for the the wind blows your shirt up and then someone sees the tip <laughs> obviously you don't have that issue but. For other people. <laughs> for me, it's the balls. For people that can so go, what? The, the, the shirt flies up. So it goes, what are your balls doing? Just They're hanging over. <laughs> you dug up your band. balls. <laughs> I go, I don't know. I watched a Wiki How article. It wasn't very clear, <laughs> wasn't clear what I was supposed to do here. So I just put them all over. I just, just yeah. put them all up. <laughs> I just tuck the balls. I can't believe that it gives all these ideas and jacking off or tucking is that should be one and two. Definitely one of them should probably be smack it. <laughs> Not wanna... icing yourself. That's crazy. <laughs> you're like a 13 year old boy and you're just like putting an ice pack on your <laughs> in science class. In science class, like that's insane. Sean... A woman, woman made that 100. percent Sean King's Muslim now. <laughs> Sean King. Uh, yeah, you were loving that, huh? You were like, what? <laughs> Sean, Danny, yeah. told, Danny told me this That he Sean converted. King's Muslim he now converted. That, That's what happens when you get Kicked off of Instagram for your Anti-Israel views Is you become Muslim A lot of people do get radicalized. A them. lot of people do become Muslim Yeah I mean it's uh it's a popular religion. But Danny said he's back to his old tricks. It's funny because he's already he's, raising He already raised like a million bucks on this GoFundMe. Oh yeah. Body so much of that is gonna be going to his well, Ramadan parties. <laughs> I mean the BLM money dried up and so It did dry up. That is so f- true. Yeah, it's, there's no money in that. There's no money print, in BLM anymore. You it's yeah, dude, I didn't even think of that. He was printing BLM money. Yeah. And then he was just kept getting, you know, killed for having frauds on it. I mean, and also he's white. And the Muslim that was a kind of issue that people were having. Dude, he really does just switch like cause to cause, whichever's bringing in the donations. Yeah. I mean, he he's like an ambulance chaser lawyer, basically. Kind of. He he's is. like an ambulance chaser activist. He is like an ambulance chaser <laughs> activist. He goes, what's hot right now? <laughs> Ooh, Islam. Which is weird because, I mean, I guess because he, he's still not saying he's still like, I'm a black Muslim. Yeah. Goes, sure you are. But. I mean, yeah, he's Muslim now. The black Muslims are coo- like pretty cool. If you ever watched Oz, yeah, for sure, they got those cool hats. The black Muslims have cool Solid, hats. Those yeah, knit, those knit kind of beanies. They look like big keepers. Out of bees? No, not out of bees. The other one. Yeah, the the other guy. I can't remember his name, but I know the guy. I can't remember. He was in lots of stuff. Yeah, he's actually British. But, what? Uh, yeah, that guy's British in real life. I, saw, I saw him on some British TV show. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's Muslim now. I guess that's a, that's a good pivot though with the Gaza stuff. He's obviously like a super liberal. He's very much uh, pro Palestine. That's kind of it's like, kind of perfect. It's funny because his chick's Muslim too. That's the one thing I was wondering. They both went. Muslim. How do you as a couple? 
convert. That seems weird to me. Well, he converted to Muslim, and then Muslims tell their wives what to do. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're Muslim, your wife doesn't have a choice. She goes, he's like, I'm thinking of, why don't we convert to Muslim? She's like, I don't want to do that. He goes, I'm Muslim now, bitch. You're Muslim too, okay? That's how being Muslim works. Sorry, <laughs> sorry Muslim people. I don't, know. I don't actually mean that. Please don't. <laughs> Once he converted to Muslim, he just put her clothes on the bed, and she goes, that's what you're putting on, honey. There's your sheet. Um, yeah, I don't... Uh, I don't know. That that seems difficult. Unless he's like, look, this is just for our financial future. Like, is he saying behind closed doors, like, baby, we're gonna we can't afford not to be Muslim? Yeah, yeah. He goes, how much money's in fucking being Muslim? He's <laughs> like, and then he probably, you know what it was? Because apparently that fundraiser he started before he officially converted. <laughs> so that. <laughs> No, it's true. He started. He goes, I'm raising $1.3 million. You see that thing? I a hundred grand. He goes, <laughs> he goes, baby, we're Muslim. <laughs> he just starts a Muslim fundraiser. It gets to a hundred grand. He starts putting the hat on. <laughs> it gets to 800 grand. He's in the full fucking gear. Yeah, he's just like, he goes, which way is Mecca? We are going on vacation. <laughs> the fundraiser hits a million dollars. Abima! Yeah. yeah. Asalaamu alaikum, brother. <laughs> Holy shit. He yeah. Has it set up that every time it dings, it goes salam alaikum. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a little more Muslim every time. <laughs> he's got like the orange beard and shit. <laughs> That's but so yeah, he's funny. uh he apparently started it before to because he wants to. Ha- which I don't even know how that'll work. You're gonna go to Gaza to hand out meals? I don't know if it's dude, that is such safe. But yeah, he was apparently he only announced being Muslim after like the fundraiser was. That cooking. is the funniest like visual of all time. <laughs> is the the fundraiser at a hundred bucks? Him you know putting on the hat at two hundred bucks? Him just up praying? No, no, no. He's like on week. No, no. He's like at a thousand. He goes on Wikipedia and starts like reading about at a thousand. He's Islam. Um, At a thousand, he's trying to use a rug for transportation. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's Muslim now, and he, he did it. Now, the question is how much of that money... Th- th- I mean, that would be such a scumbag move, because he obviously did uh, allegedly reappropriate a lot of his old fundraising money, but like, you're going to like take some of the Gaza meal money? Oof. That'd be a tough one. That'd be a scandal. That'd I mean, I guess if that style. happens, then he just becomes Jewish. Yeah, because a lot of that BLM stuff was going to like lawyers, essentially. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean, yeah. it was like going to like prosecutor. It would be go. It would go to like lawyers to like fight on behalf of someone for probably a decent amount of money. You know what I mean? Yeah, and lots which of is different probably, for one that's like specifically going to meals. How do they even get the meals to them? Do they just that's sort of what drop I'm them on a plan? Probably. Air- yeah, like I don't know if you're going to airdrop them. Do you think he's? Do you think he'd have the guts to pay for a plane and then come and just drop empty bags? <laughs> I hope not. From Sean King, uh, I don't think so. But yeah, that's what he says. And I mean, he raised a lot of money. There's so many Muslim people, though, right? That's the thing. There's so many Muslim. You people. are. The you most... can get more money because there's more of them, right? Yeah, like, they do support you when you become Muslim. Oh, for like sure. Like when Tate went Muslim, people were loving it. Yeah, they were lo- absolutely loving it. You inherit so many people that like ride or die for you. Yeah, and maybe uh, I should go Muslim. I don't know if you would like it. Why not? Too restrictive. No, I'd be like a rich Muslim that doesn't do all this stuff. Yeah, but during man. Ramadan, when you can't eat the, while the sun is up i think you would i feel like you'd be God, passing out all the time i feel like we, Allah would be give me a pass you'd i don't like, think it works that way i actually could probably eat less than you so you'd be the one who doesn't but like i'm saying i don't think, think you'd it. like the long i don't think you'd like the long uh you'd, stretches of no no food i'll tell you what i wouldn't like i'd feel vulnerable when i was down there with my ass out praying <laughs> i don't like to leave myself <laughs> yeah vulnerable you're looking like around that. hey no peeking guys <laughs> Eyes on the mat. I also don't like wearing sandals. That's another thing. I feel I don't. I'm not a See, big. I love I'm sandals. not a big grown man in sandals. That would be guy. the big thing that would convert me is the sandals and the dresses. That seems. I love that's the sandals I, and the dresses. Okay, I take it back. You do seem like you. This is fucking made for you. Sandals and dresses is money. I could do that. I don't want to pray five times a day though. I don't want to do that either. Yeah, but five times a day is, it seems to look a lot. Do you think they pray for pussy any of those times? I don't think so. No. I think they pray for their wife to shut the hell it up. It is funny that some of the people that, you know, know like rich Muslim dudes, they'll be like, dude, that guy like left the strip club to go like pray. Oh, of course. <laughs> Orthodox Jews get in that the most. Oh, yeah. A right. lot of those Orthodox Jews come straight from fucking Torah readings to like, getting lap dances. Dude, there's like, if you go to like fish concerts, they're like, like the, they're like actual Orthodox Jews who go to them and stuff. Yeah, the drug stuff doesn't seem as crazy because I, I, I think it's a little bit easier of a sell to be like, when I'm doing acid, I'm actually being in touch with the, mm. the creator. I'm this is me trying to I get mean, more. I mean, you know what? To be them. honest, I feel like you can sell Judaism the drug stuff easier. Judaism doesn't have any sort of uh, like issue with alcohol, though. Like specifically, you can't drink alcohol if you're a Muslim. But Judaism, but I they smoke weed. 
Uh, I Dude, don't, I know I tons don't, of Muslim oh, people in I'm Toronto. Sure. That I mean, like, I know tons of Muslims. They just drink, like too. blaze nonstop. Yeah, they're just secular Muslims. But I'm no, saying, I'm saying ones that are not secular oh. that have like a in their system. They're like, mm. yeah, I can smoke weed. I just can't drink. Yeah, yeah. I know they're or eat not, pork. Yeah, I definitely know they're not allowed to drink or eat pork. Haram. It is haram. It's haram. So we're gonna talk about social media. That's kind of the big thing that we were supposed to talk about this week. So. There's a bunch of stuff going on at the same time, right? Yeah. There's the TikTok ban. Neil Young, first and foremost, What's Neil Young up to? has announced his unenthusiastic return to Spotify. Oh, sick. I was just trying to listen to it literally like a week or two ago. I was trying to listen to Neil and Young. Like, oh, right. And I was, like, he's, I was like, he's still on this bullshit? Are you kidding me? All you can listen to is like two songs on some uh, like movie mm. soundtrack. That was it. Just like, Whereas you want the Monsanto album. No, that's the only one I don't want. But I want to fuck. <laughs> Dude, Neil Young Greatest Hits is... The guy is just one of the greatest... He is a hit factory. Of all time. This it's is, amazing. This is one of the biggest L's anyone ever taken. This is legitimately like storming out of your office because you quit and then like going back an hour later asking yeah. for your job back. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This is not great. But I thought he doesn't even own his music. It was the whole thing was always unclear to me because I thought he sold his catalog. So then the people who bought the catalog are like, "Yeah, we don't want to take your shit off Spotify." Yeah, you don't own this anymore. You don't pal. own this anymore. So maybe they were like, "Okay." But he did kind of own some of it. I guess. I guess he owned some of it. Yeah, but well, it was it was all gone on Spotify. But it is a huge L, man. And he's like legitimately for this guy it was one of the mo- it was probably one of the most uh overestimating of positions and if you looked at culture it wasn't crazy to say that like in the mid pandemic to be like the people were like they're all going to be vilified forever yeah and i'm standing up for what's the you know the mainstream corporate opinion like uh, the s- History is going to be on my side. Also, there was and they could not have been more incorrect about how this whole thing is looked at. The farther, the farther we get from that whole scene, the more normal people are like, "Yeah, I was crazy." And then the and then the farther you get from that, the people forget that they were crazy, and then just go, "Everyone else was crazy." But yeah, and in hindsight, but the government was a bunch of lies. To think he was so against like Monsanto and GMOs and all that stuff, and you're like. That's the same boat as the Pfizer stuff and the Moderna. Like you should have been against all this stuff, against all these like mRNA vaccines. That's you're even against funnier. like you're genetically right. modified foods. You're against these big corporations who are like making people unhealthy and who are uh, kind of just have these like insane lobbies to government to yeah. like you know, this, bypass they're, they're, regulation. Yeah, they're like you're right. You think he'd be more in line with like what RFK was saying? He, well, exactly. And again, the the hippie state. That's where all these like during COVID, all these hippies went essentially right wing, quote unquote, like that's where people, because they were like, yeah, we're like against GMOs. We're against like putting stuff in our bodies that we don't agree we're with. We're OG and Yeah, we're like the OG anti-vax. And then they were like, yeah, we're against all this stuff. We eat organic, blah, blah, blah. And we don't, we actually care what we put in our bodies. So we're not taking the vaccine. Everybody's like, you're right. That's wing. your world a little bit. Kind of. I know lots of people like that. And then he was like, for some reason, just was so steadfast on the vaccine. At the time, I guess he just didn't like what the... I think it was very much he just didn't like what the anti-vax, like, those people who they were. And he's like, I don't want to be involved with them. So I'm... Just, exactly. And then, but again, it was... Like and also, his. it's a, a, a self-fulfilling thing when you, you take a little bit of stand and then every, you know, left-wing publication and media personality is saying good for you. But he was, like, talk, shitting on Joe Rogan. Shitting on everybody. Yeah. But specifically, it was like I had a lot to do with Joe Rogan and the Spotify deal. I know. That yeah. was the whole... De- that was yeah. the whole... Thing, the whole deal, because man. they weren't removing episodes that he deemed to be misinformation that yeah, was pro vaccine. Turns out you were misinformation, Neil. Huge Mr. Informa- Mr. Information. Yeah, a heart of not a heart of gold, it's a heart of myocarditis. <laughs> Someone must have done that already now. <laughs> I keep on I've been a minor for a heart of myocarditis. <laughs> not liking that, Neil. I'm not getting old, <laughs> <laughs> and my heart's getting old. Boo doo doo. I mean, honestly, he's so good, though. Fucking, you love him. I love Neil Young. Yeah, I saw him live. He was never times. totally up my alley. Oh man, he's the best. He's the best. So the TikTok ban. Welcome back. <clears throat> All a lot of this stuff is coming by, uh, coming back. This, uh, is, this is on the hot the news wire right now. This yeah. is right on the news wire. But they've been talking about it forever. And well, I didn't before. I actually just read up to be so because Trump tried to ban it, and then 
uh, Microsoft was going to buy it, and I believe Adobe was going to buy it. This is in 2020 before Trump uh, lost the election. And then Biden's like first kind of act, one of his first things was because basically the day Biden got in, he's like, I'm undoing all this Trump stuff, mm-hmm. and he undid the border wall, which was good decision and then he un- <laughs> and then he undid this this was one of them he's just like we're not making them divest or whatever and then i think just four more four years later people were like yeah probably that was a good idea <laughs> you know, it's so funny trump recently was like i don't even think it's a good idea well because he doesn't want to make face because he understands yeah. that it's going to make facebook so powerful and he hates facebook and he has a point i don't Your know if he does have a point because to be honest the one platform that probably trump's fans are on the most is facebook i know but that's the platform right? that he knows is going to <laughs> censor him the most they're going to censor the shit out of it. Zuckerberg sort of might change his tone on that a little bit. Zuckerberg's, honest to God, the, if you listen to Zuckerberg in interviews, again, uh, what people do and whatever, but like mm. Zuckerberg's sort of the same as, remember the guy that owned Twitter before? What's his name? Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey. The same thing as him. Like those guys like kind of do have like tech free speech somewhat principles. Yeah, but then they... But yeah. when the government, I think that uh, Jack Dorsey just hated Trump. Yeah, Jack Dorsey and, and Zuckerberg, his thing is like, you know, we have so many people who work here and like, he's like, I just can't make these decisions unilaterally. But I don't know so. if Facebook's going to be worse than I th- well, that, anyways, TikTok. Well, TikTok, yeah. Uh, or YouTube. Yeah, I don't know what TikTok's like in terms of, of banning. In people. my opinion, I think they'd TikTok, probably be the same. The thing is, TikTok is... I think Google would... The stuff's so hard to pin down because sometimes you'll like post something on tiktok and you'll say shit in it and they're like we've removed this for hate speech and you're like what the fuck hate speech and then you'll post it on somewhere where you think would be like more lax and they leave it up like you'll put it on instagram you're like well if this got removed from tiktok surely instagram won't leave it up and instagram's like it's fine and vice versa you'll post something and you know of course so it's all over the there's no like snapchat standardized code ridiculous yeah and there's no standardized code for all that stuff so it's hard to know but uh, I mean, Trump has a point. Apparently, Trump tried to sell... What's his point, in your opinion? That it will make Facebook more powerful if, if you just Well, that's it. that's kind of what I'm you saying about all this stuff. 170 million users. This is what... A lot of these times when they do stuff like this, it it's kind of... A, it always, you know, one of the biggest ones that happened in America was the Microsoft thing that almost, like, you know, skyrocketed Mac in a lot of ways. Yeah. That they really don't have much capability to, uh, like... They're, they're, it's almost like it seems like there's things that are kind of like unfair and you want the government to get involved and like make it more fair and they always make it worse yeah there's that part of it that's a security threat or whatever i'm sure there's ways to uh i don't think it's that crazy to say that you know uh th- what i do think is that you should always be able to say we're going to make the same rules as China. Like if China says their company, our companies can't be there, they should well, that's give them Paul, the same. Paul, that's a very fair. Palmer Lucky said that. I saw him on an interview. Well, that's saying, very fair. He's the guy who makes, he, he's the guy who invented the Oculus. Yeah, it's like, why do you, why can your companies be here and ours can't be there? That's, come well, on, that's, that's not, a, I mean, that's, that's been, just a simple like free trade negotiation. And I mean, that's been a thing forever and America has kind of just done it, you know, where they say like, yeah, we'll put all these restrictions on Google and YouTube and all this stuff just to be, operating in your country like they essentially go by whatever the government says but yeah just say hey like we're not even going to ban tiktok we're just going to say hey we'd like a reciprocal agreement uh we we want you know all our apps to be available in china and china said we'll say no and then we're like okay well if you're going to say no to that then we're not going to allow your apps here because fair is fair and he says like that's the thing that most americans would understand like it won't seem like a bungling on the part of the politicians they'll just be like look you know we we would just want it to be fair and they won't allow it so is that is that your interpretation of what's happening right now like that's the main argument no no that's not what to me it seems more like there's you know kind of grandstanding there's that. There's like a lot like of these hearings. People get to go get their viral moments and yeah, sort of. I mean, look. There's no, air their grievances. There's no question that the CCP is a stakeholder in ByteDance and TikTok, and like you know they have direct lines to all the executives at all these companies. And yeah, like they can for sure like build back doors. Like if anything, maybe like just make your algorithms open source. That's maybe an option. So at least you know people can just go over it and see exactly like what you're doing if if that's required. Yeah, I don't think it's. I mean, I don't think it's going to get shut down. But it doesn't seem that crazy to say that you know it's got to have an American company that we have access to, not like 
the Chinese government does. Yeah, and I mean, it's still, here. they should allow it. They should just be like, look, we want Instagram. and Because, I mean, again, it's like they do have different rules in China for their algorithm. Like, their algorithm does not promote the degeneracy that like TikTok in the United States does like it's all So you're saying it yeah make it open source make it open source and you know just so we know what exactly is going on like why is certain stuff pushed and maybe it's you know it's the I don't think that's that crazy you want this? like it's the um, whatever tail wagging the dog or, or vice versa but like you know may- maybe it is that just the people here that's the content they want and it's not actually being pushed to them it's what they desire and you know we're saying like oh you're pushing it and they're like no people are putting it out we show it the same as we show science content they don't want to see science and math content that's just like they want to see this but china they are kind of like restricting that kind of stuff where you, you know you see more specifically like educational stuff on tiktok and less of that shit so well you could still give them regulations without it switching over to an american ownership uh yeah I, I mean i'm sure there's many options i can't see a scenario where they're just gonna like be like all right TikTok's gone. It's not going to happen. That's that. I mean, it could, but I, I, it's not impossible, uh, especially if they think. It's well, the like only way that that would happen, is. in my opinion, is if like the Chinese government basically said like, "There's you're not allowed to do this." Like they're like, if ByteDance was like, "We do want to make this sale," it's and they were like, "No," because for the company, it would be the it would be a bad financial decision to not do that. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Like if, but you know what? Like they could just decide. You know, like they would be fine if they were not operating in America. They'll obviously lose a shit ton of money, but you know, they might be like, you know, not everything's a financial decision, and they'll. Well, that's what do you mean? They have shareholders, of course. Everything's a financial decision. Not, I'm talking about not when you're like a CCP owned company. You're like, well, they wouldn't. But I'm saying that's what my point to you is. It's like if I say I'm making a financial decision, and then the government tells me like you can't, yeah, and then you go not, every, yeah, obviously being like. Told you're gonna get fucking thrown in but jail saying, if you do this. It's no, like, but I'm saying the CC might decision. be given some sort of ultimatums to say like you have to do this, this, and this to remain in America, and they'll just be like, "It's fine, don't worry about it. We'll just take it out of the app store." And now you have to deal with all your constituents being mad that we you you got TikTok removed, and they'll just be like, you know, maybe there's some sort of long game there. I I don't know, but I I find it hard. I to see your that. play. I don't think that I, 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 I think, that think that that so. would be. The, I I don't think that they believe that that bluff would be. Yeah, one I that mean, pays out. apparently it's worth sixty billion dollars. TikTok, like, just bite dance like USA, like they're whatever. Fellas, I want to tell you about bioprotein. Here's why your hormones suck, especially yours. You can't see that I'm pointing at the one and only Danny Polishuk. Most guys are focused on testosterone, but it's not even half of the puzzle. In order to absorb testosterone optimally, you must have adequate growth hormone. More specifically, it's end result growth factors. Unfortunately, growth hormone decreases every year after you hit puberty. By the time you're old man Polishuk's age, Mm -hmm. you're low on the stuff, which may explain your poor gym performance or even excess body fat, and that's where BioPro Plus comes in. BioPro Plus gives you back those growth factors naturally, giving you HGH-like results with zero needles, zero side effects, and zero doctor's visits. And that is what's better about this one. At all at a fraction of the cost of these prescription treatments. I've tried BioProtein myself, and I love it. As you get older, you know, it is... Guys start needing stuff like this. Mm -hmm. You don't have the same body that you used to. So bioprotein is a solution for that. So if you want to fix the way you perform, look, and feel without the risks of big pharma synthetic stuff, head on over to bioproteintech.com. B-I-O-P-R-O-T-E-I-N-T-E-C-H.com to learn more or click the link in the bio and use the code BOYSCAST for $30 off your first order. And I got to tell the fellas here about FitBod. If you don't know FitBod, this is the essential that your workout really needs. It's a fitness app that creates completely personalized workouts that adapts as you improve. I actually was just in Calgary and the hotel was attached to the venue and they had a really good gym there. So there was, when you use FitBod, it can give you lots of different exercises. And sometimes I'll tell you one of the thing is that sometimes with the given equipment, you won't, you'll be like, how do I do this muscle? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely like cable pulley machine. That's a perfect example. Sometimes like they'll have different uh, attachments. You're like, sometimes they'll have 30 attachments. Sometimes they have two. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, okay, well for two attachments, you actually have to it also keeps your workouts really interesting it keeps track of everything for you 
It's like having your own personal trainer, but better and cheaper. You can work out anywhere, anytime without having the equipment. It's easy to build a custom fitness plan that works for you. So FitBod creates personalized workout routines based on the goals, fitness level, and available equipment. It adapts as you improve, so each workout will be challenging and push you to make progress. FitBod tracks your muscle recovery so you can avoid burnout because sometimes that's a guessing game for you, right? Absolutely. Sometimes you're just like, oh, you know what? I worked out two days ago. Like, can I do this? It's like yeah. it tracks all that stuff and just kind of gives you answers. Fine tuned by experienced certified personal trainers to bring best practices and exercise science to you. You can learn new movements the right way with over a thousand demonstration videos you can watch on the spot. Then add FitBod to your workout essentials. Join FitBod today to get your personalized workout plan and 25% off your subscription or you can try the app free at fitbod.me slash boyscast that's f-i-t-b-o-d dot m-e slash boyscast there, so that's a lot of money to just I don't know if you saw but all the, the Biden people basically when they did his State of the Union that people didn't think was the greatest they hired all these like influencers mm -hmm. to uh, uh, like talk so about how good awesome. it was yeah. and they gave them the specific points and then all these influencers came out being like hey like I never even signed this contract and they started like I sort of thought that I uh, you know I was maybe going to make the deal and then they started being like hey you got to post about this thing but it's like pretty funny that they like it just seems like a plan that has so much potential for backfiring and maybe it's coming from like you know the some of these politicians media companies like not understanding the ins and outs because a lot of these we even know you know actors whenever you see actors like we all in comedy and in the youtube world and podcasting a lot of times have you know people working for us and we're kind of really running your own little company yeah what they do a lot of these actors if you see them posting all this stuff like you know the jimmy fallon's of the world like i know people that do this they run these big media companies they go meet up with like ellen and then they make you know 40 videos in one day they just read off these scripts and then they go post them one a day or whatever and they have these big companies that do it and they're very like removed from it and then yeah. these companies are sort of removed from culture in a lot of ways right mm -hmm. so i think a lot of times um these you know the democratic strategist hires this agency there's a lot of people and, and no one's really saying like Hey, by the way, there's a pretty big like risk of hiring like a hundred people that now are like privy to information. Yeah. And you're like, well, the sign NDAs, you're like, dude, a lot of these are like college kids with 300 followers. They don't know about that stuff. Like, it just seems like such a high risk for a politician for, for to sure. be like, I to, think that because it just gives out the extent to which like, these are real people and them going public probably has more damage than this person with 300 people get for talking about your propaganda. Yeah, I'm curious the actual damage. I don't know if I'm over. Dude, so many cynical. of these people have taken like a million dollars. Like, who's that guy that was the king of the New York? Casey Neistat or whatever. Casey Neistat, yeah. He was like full on Hillary. Yeah, and that then basically his, like yeah. kind of hurt his brand a little bit because he was and, just like kind of like people thought it was corny that yeah, he was doing it. He doesn't yeah. talk about politics and exactly. just kind of seemed out of nowhere that he became like a shill for that. Mm -hmm. And then basically admitted that he took money kind of said that he was like embarrassed about it like looked back on it and it was like that kind of does more damage to their party than if the, none of this happened yeah I, I i wonder if it like in terms of actually getting votes in in like an election if that does damage because well, i mean it would be like this it would be like putting uh hiring 20 people to come to your comedy show to laugh really hard like that just seems like if one of those oh, people went and said danny hired you of course you'd, it would be way more damage than if you had just not done it yeah yeah but it I seems a high risk maneuver in yeah, my opinion yeah i wonder I, I will say, like, they probably do to a degree, you know... I Make them sign NDAs? Not even sign NDAs. The, the degree to which you think, like, you know, the Democrats control all the mainstream media besides Fox, essentially, you know, they just make sure that that's not a big story. It's just like a TikTok story, and then, you know, maybe, maybe it's just like... Yeah, but the original thing was a TikTok story, so all I'm saying is, like... You're just counteracting your own press you're getting. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, again, I, I don't know what their strategy is. Maybe, maybe it'll backfire. Maybe. I, I can't see them getting tons of new voters because I can't see like a 20 year old being like pumped to vote for Biden other than if it's like a girl or and, you're and, in and politics and, they go, it's, and it's single issue like uh, Biden is pro abortion and that's the only thing you care about. So, or yeah, unless you want to be your surroundings, unless you want to be that. living in handmaid's tale, like, go but yeah, go I, I, who's, you, who's convincing you? I think what happens is those young people ones, it's really, you're convincing someone that wouldn't vote to vote. They I, already would probably vote a Democrat, but you're sorry and saying like, Hey, just so you know, this is like, you got, you have no idea how big of a deal this is. You got to get out there. Voter die. I think a lot of like early 20 year old men, 
are going to be coming out voting strong for for Trump this T. year. T Diddy for sure. Oh, big time. Like I think a lot of yeah, 19 I think, mil, 20 I th- men you're <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think like the 18 to 25, 27 cohort like well, we had an article about that that maybe I'll just like skip to before we get to the meme stuff, but it was funny because this article it was uh it said we need to talk about Gen Z men and it was like one in six Gen Z men say that feminism's done more harm than good versus the 13% of baby boomers who feel the same way. 30% of 37, oh, I think I, uh, it says one in six, but that doesn't make sense. 37% of men aged 16 to 29 say the term toxic masculinity is an, uh, an unhelpful fa- phrase. And they're basically, they're just, the whole thing is basically saying Gen Z men are voting Republican and mm-hmm. they don't like feminism. And it's like, and the whole you thing told them they were bad for like their whole fucking adolescence. <laughs> their entire since they were twelve. Yeah, since they were twelve, you're like you're a piece of shit, dude. For can your... you imagine being in high school and elementary school for that and not coming out and being like that shit's gay? Like, oh, insane. obviously, like some like blue haired chick is like telling you you're all bad and she's crying and yeah, but like, obviously in most quivering schools quivering and you're all just like laughing in the back of the unless like, you went to drama school like the cool probably popular dudes weren't about that life no so your interaction with that is like dweebs are into this shit and you can also like think think about when you were in school like you could honestly make your fucking teacher have a hissy fit if you're just like i like trump also you know your teacher is going to be all about that life so your interaction is like annoying women that are like telling you what to do but i'm saying you could literally make your teacher cry like it used to have to be like <laughs> you put tax on their fucking chair or like you glued them to their desk or something now you just go i like trump yeah, and your I teacher like has a fucking Tate, yeah. meltdown <laughs> <laughs> and like has to call your parents and stuff, and but your parents also like Trump. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and then you're like, she's crying because you said you like Trump, and you're like, this is the funniest thing ever. I made an adult cry by saying I like Donald Trump. Well, it's also like you have to be the lack of awareness you have to be to say stuff like, at its core, it's just about equality of the sexes. How have we reached a point in modern day society when a portion of male youth doesn't feel positive towards feminists? Like, you have to have fucking walking around with like a turban covering your eyes to, <laughs> to not see. I would. To, why do you? Think think they don't like it i mean here's the problem it was annoying yeah it didn't help them it made their life worse made their life worse and you haven't even quantified what like equality means like these people like these women or whatever who are like That's you know, also there's, there's no equality you're like okay give us some sort of indication of where we'll be at when we'll say we've reached it and you'll just shut the fuck up about this for at least some period of time like you just they're never gonna stop like there's never going to be a point well, where, the they're, answer, where they're no, articles. No, yeah, the on. actual answer to that is when they find a new issue, which they have, Muslims. Right, but like uh, legitimately though, you're like, when are you going to stop with this stuff? It's like when I found a new thing, which I have, which yeah, is Palestine, sure. and I don't hear them harping on about it anymore. They mostly talk about fucking Israel. Now. But I'm saying any women who's like whatever, any like not all feminists, obviously, but you know, lots of them are like, yeah, women are not equal, and we're still clawing for that equality. Okay, okay like what does that mean? Like where where do we reach? At what point do we reach well, I'll give you one. Should men and women spend the same on a haircut? Some experts think so. Some experts like, are fucking idiots. It's like what? So what says you're like 15 year olds? Like why is he not on board with subsidizing women's haircuts? <laughs> not even <laughs> subsidizing. We're not even. Well, saying how else would you do it? Well, other than like you pay for theirs. Are you just saying the hairdresser should do a a two hour haircut should cost the same as a thirty they're, they're minute haircut? Like, saying that what are you talking about? They're saying that the system is like rigged essentially. Like it's like a systemic. Like issue where all hair cutters are okay. Like, Women are stupid, so we can charge them more money. Well, they, in fact, no, the they haircuts have, take they have longer. more hair. Just literally, women have more hair. Couldn't you not make the same argument where it's like men have to pay more money for food because we eat more because we eat more calories? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, there you I go. Mean, I mean, I agree. Yeah, it's obviously so stupid. You're like, you go, how many guys go in and go, hey, just uh, number two all around. And the guy's like, vzz, vzz, vzz. all right, thanks, man. That'll be 30 bucks. Yeah, we'll give you a cheap, you you have, a, yeah, we can give you the 30 bucks. Yeah, yeah, like you can get the $30 haircut. And you also, by the way, having long hair, you also could just not get haircuts. Like if you're a chick that like doesn't care a ton about your hair, if you wear a ponytail, yeah. you could probably get away with a haircut a year. Yeah. Easily, you know and what I'm saying. You just kind of get your maybe you get your ends ends do, done, done once a year and pop it in a ponytail. Yep, but they don't want that. Not they, they don't they want that. To, they want to go to but, the salon so they can fucking <laughs> cluck away with their friends. <laughs>
But my point is, what do money. what do you want if you make an article like this where you say, okay, haircuts for women cost more, and that's a problem? Like, well, what should happen? Like, well, I guess the government should chip in. I think if you just think of equality as just you know, they think of equality. Everything's as like the same a, in every. A law. law of nature versus a concept. Like it's just like it's men a have to spend more on toilet paper because their shits are bigger. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, that's unfair. <laughs> I guess that's unfair. Should, Close the Danny should, toilet paper gap. Should we subsidize that? Or? Danny TP gap. Probably Canada will be the first country in the world. To subsidize that free toilet paper for all. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. It's it's like uh, and uh, the expert. Danny has the ex I have to spend more money on detergents because of all your shit stains. <laughs> you know how much my bleach budget is a year? <laughs> Close the bleach gap of men. Fucking unreal. Having more shit stains. <laughs> yeah, but the, I mean, again, it's and when they say experts, they're like, we talk to experts. Were any of them just hairstylists, or was it like a woman? Yeah, I don't know who this expert is. <laughs> who are these experts? Because any hairstylist would be like, yeah, it's just way more work. Yeah, yeah, so we charge more money. Oh, uh, we charge generally based on how long it is in the material. So the dye costs more, and if it's more time, it's going to be more money. Any other questions, dude? I go to <laughs> get my haircut. The expert's mind's just blown, dude. I go to get my haircut. The guy max takes 25 minutes, usually 20 to 25 minute haircut. 25 if he's like, nobody's waiting and he's kind of just like, whatever, wants to shoot this. No, thing mine out. usually asks how much I want to cut off. I say not that much and then he cuts way more <laughs> off. But he does it quickly. Buddy, I don't know uh, what it is with these haircutters. Once they get those scissors in their hands, they can't be stopped, man. Yeah. They go, yeah, yeah, just a trim. And they go, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I thought, oh, did you say just a trim? Because I thought you said join the <laughs> army. <laughs> He wanted, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I've never heard of a woman getting a haircut in 25 minutes. It's like an hour and a half. Hour and a half? In what world are you living at? They Even block more? off a fucking month and a half. <laughs> Dude, girls are in there for four or five hours sometimes. There you go. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't pay attention. Well, because they enough, dye it. Cluck, cluck, cluck. <laughs> then they have to go back in the chair and then they get a bit of a trim. Cluck, cluck, cluck. Yeah. Then they, they, put some, they put some stuff in there like yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the dyes uh, and but yeah, the, 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 the toners. Yeah. Cluck, cluck, cluck a little more. Boop. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> so it sounds like in a hair salon. <laughs> Boop. Looks like you got the goddamn petting zoo. <laughs> Yeah, this is nonsense. This is literally. Do you think the barbers ever just have earplugs in? <laughs> uh, they just nod their head while you're clucking and they just nod their head? No, because it's all chicks doing it or gay guys and they love to cluck too. Gay guys do love to if cluck. If you're like a straight I hate dude, when I get a gay guy. Likes to cluck. A, I had a gay guy, best haircutter I've ever had. Yeah. Best haircutters are gay yeah, guys yeah, I and Asians. I, we had them. Yes. Same guy we had. Them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Gay guys and Tomas. Asians. Yeah, Tomas was fucking sick. Gay guys and yeah. Asians are both really good at hair cutting. Yeah. How cuz I uh, I think Asian guys are they're particular. Yeah. But no matter what ethnicity, no matter what gender, when they walk into that salon, they take an oath to cut more than they promise. You know what? Actually, I had a uh, Asian dude, this dude Richard in Liberty Ri Village. I mean, we both had, Richard? We, we had the same hair but he was straight. Didn't talk at all. Literally, he was all business. Not a peep. Literally, you couldn't That's get a true. word out of that guy. He's not a awesome. fucking peep from Richard. Nothing. Nothing. He was just working away. He's just like doing his thing. He, he gave me the best haircut. He was like the sushi guy. Yeah, he was honestly. He was like, like your hero dreams of sushi. Yeah, that guy yeah, meant yeah. business. That guy was the best haircut. He was too. really good. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens. They get distracted with the clucking. Yeah, exactly. I know they're talking too much and they're just yapping. And, and then they go, there's a pay gap. And you go, yeah, you could have seen two more people if you shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> you just weren't talking all day. You could have seen more people and earned more income. That's but did you see what happened concept. on Coronation Street last night? <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, hey. Richard was a surgeon out there, Richard right? was money. Sometimes when I go back to Toronto, I think I should go get a haircut. I don't even need one. I just want to go. I forgot his name, actually. I was thinking, too, and I couldn't remember the name or where it was. Yeah, yeah. It's I knew it was in Liberty. Liberty Village. I wasn't going to walk around Liberty. <laughs> Hair? <laughs> Hair? He wouldn't even respond, man. He's, he's, he's fucking in there. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was great. He was so good. And he, he did, yeah. Some. He did the buzz parts with scissors and oh, did just a good job. He used to do fades with scissors, man. This guy was a fucking artist. <laughs> Shout out Richard. I don't know what the place is called, but I know I can't shout it I out. Can, can you don't want it though. It'd be full. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one. Women do 6.4 k more hours of unpaid housework than men per year. So I'm not sure why that uh, young people are not loving these articles. However, this is the thing. How much more money do 
men or in Ryan. So there's probably a lot of different components to this. And we've had, you know, different conversations about this at different angles. But I just want to bring up one point with this. Yeah. They always say girls do, you know, X amount more housework. What they never talk about is does this housework need to be done? <laughs> because it is possible that you do not need to wash your bed sheets twice a week. No. You do not need to wash Preach. your pillowcases twice a week. Preach. You do not no. need to vacuum those carpets more than once every when you move in. <laughs> <laughs> Just rent a vacuum for the day, return it, and then rent it again. You the spit day on around. the counter. You do a bit of a wash with your sleeve. Yeah, I'd like once to see every couple months. I want to see how these chicks are itemizing this shit. What are they like? <laughs> washing a plate is a dollar. Because here's the thing: all the no, they're saying hours. Hours, okay. No, you're right. They did itemize it. You're correct. That's fucked up, okay? And then also- They did like, itemize it. The guy work is way higher value work if, if we're playing that game, like lawns and handyman shit. Sinks uh, need to be washed snow, once every 10 snow years. Snow removal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like laundry is two bucks a pound. So I think there's lots of that stuff that you're talking about that you're right, you'd itemize it higher, and I agree. But I think that, and we have been through that, but I do think that in general- a lot of the housework that women do and then are just like, oh, I'm so overworked. You go, don't do that. Yeah. You go, I'm telling you that that carpet does not need to be cleaned as much as you're doing it. Mm -hmm. But also, again, like, does the guy who you're with... Like, washing out your bathtub is a once-every-five-year job. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, does the guy who you're with make more than $6,400 more than you? Because that would seem like a pretty fair trade. He goes to work and brings in, say, an extra $10,000 more than you do. But then you do $6,400 worth of work. I'm not arguing with that you on any like of those points. Benefit, You're not going to get yeah. an argument from me. Yeah. I'm just sticking on my one main point. I'm in the pocket yeah. with the, your, this work does not need to be done. That's like you saying, listen, uh, I just spent four hours shoveling the snow. And they said there was one inch of snow. It was going to melt in four, four seconds. Sure. And then you were like, I don't care. We're putting it on the books. You go, that was three hours of work I did. That's nonsense. This is, a guy ho this is a guy trying to, you go, the ladies go, you know how much housework I did? You go, are you out of your mind? I just hosed the driveway <laughs> for five hours. <laughs> That's itemized. That's a fucking Greek man itemizing his driveway hosing. You go, I don't know if I don't know if that driveway hosing needs to be on the books. This is this is nonsense math right here. This is yeah, I don't uh I don't agree with it. So these hate crime bills, mm -hmm. they're popping up like groundhogs right, left, and center. Yeah, and obviously people listening to the podcast. They're not popping up in the greatest nation on earth. Y donation <laughs> <laughs> to the Patreon. <laughs> Please consider joining the Patreon, patreon.com slash the voice cast. <laughs> over 2,500 dogs over there in the greatest nation on earth. <laughs> A donation. Yeah. Not here, though. That bucket's name is Philip. Do not be afraid to <laughs> fill him up. But, so Belgium... Canada has one right now. Canada's got a Germany is every yeah, time. Germany is that, but like, I swear to God, it's like a fucking groundhog game popping up where you got to hammer him down. What's well, that called? Whack a mole. Whack a mole. Whack a mole. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if, whack a pole because it's happening in Poland. Are they doing it in Poland too? Probably. Probably. <laughs> I actually was hoping you'd know. Uh, that I don't know. Uh, I mean, yeah, they have. I know they're happening. There was an Australia one that happened recently. If like, not, it's whack a pole, like whacking a dude's a guy pole, go to because jail? it's mostly happening to dudes. A guy in Australia, or a guy in Australia recently. Oh, Australia's about this life. Because even when I announced my tour there, a lot of people were like, well, "Good luck, good, mate. Good, good, good luck, mate. <laughs> good luck, mate. You're gonna be fucking doing those jokes from behind bars, <laughs> mate." <laughs> yeah, I'd probably be fine. <laughs> Or maybe not, but uh, well, whole, that's one of those things at the point where I'm at right now. Like, if I do an Australian tour and they put me in like jail for a couple months because of my jokes, I'd be sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd I actually would love that. Yeah, yeah. I wish that fucking get out of jail. You have another fucking. You got a swastika burned in your ass, dude. I would get out of jail like a freedom fighter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody's waiting. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's just, just an Uber waiting for you. I'm trying to do a press conference. <laughs> no one's there. Yeah. <laughs> just the Uber. Ladies and gentlemen of Australia. Oh, I no am one, free. No one made it out. Did we not get the word out? I mean, the Canada one is the craziest because for like, you know, just for our personal stuff, like they are really very much criminalizing comedy in a way. And not that they hadn't already before. Like we know of two comedians who have had to pay 
actual monetary penalties for jokes. Human Rights Tribunal. The Human Rights Tribunal. Uh, Mike Ward and Human Wrongs uh, Tribunal. Guy Earl. The two, those are the only two. But it's happened. And this happened before this shit. So you have to figure that... You know, th these will be ultimately like you think you're destroying the heckler. Uh, no, you are not destroying the heckler, Mr. Comedian, because you get home after destroying said heckler and he just put a fucking claim against the human rights tribunal <laughs> against you. And now you're going to have to pay the fucking heckler that you destroyed $50,000. <laughs> that is so funny. It's heckler destroys comedian video and it's him <laughs> calling a lawyer. <laughs> Like human rights, my <laughs> feelings were hurt. He calls a lawyer, and they come and bankrupt you. The crazy thing and is, then you're, you're just like on the street, and then it's comedian destroyed. <laughs> but you're heckler. like you're posting. It's like if you're a comedian posting a video destroying lesbian heckler. heckler destroys comedian. But like you're posting evidence now. You're just like posting the evidence of your hate crime, essentially in Canada. Right, because you're posting it online to get all these views, and then some guy was like, "Well, yeah, I'll tell you what. If you wanna, if you wanna reach out to these one, one of these tribunals against Ryan Long, you can find me in Baltimore this weekend, <laughs> D.C., Boston, and I'm gonna be saying stuff that's not gonna be oh. fit for public consumption in Winnipeg, <sighs> Atlanta, San Diego, Houston, Austin, New Zealand, Australia. Shout out to Calgary because it was fucking Calgary awesome this weekend. Tickets at RyanLongComedy.com. You can find Danny. On the will, corner, blowing dudes. Yeah, at the Human Rights Tribunal. I'll be in uh, Saratoga Springs Comedy Works this weekend. Come on out to that. And then I got a lot of dates. Uh, Dallas, Hamilton, Ontario, April 19th and 20th. Try to come fucking and stop hammer. Them. Bring fucking Trudeau. Bring Jagmeet. Come to the show. I'm going to fucking put him in the front row. I'm going to destroy both Jack of those Deadmeat. fucking... Yeah, <laughs> Erdo, I'll say it to his face. Comedian. But seriously, come out to those shows in Hamilton. Comedian, comedian just drawing. <laughs> comedian getting destroyed by a heckler is <laughs> fucking good Amazing. shit, my friend. Yeah, financially destroyed by a heckler. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's like, there's no way that that's not going to be a more common thing in Canada. Because like, it's happened well, it's, twice I'm telling already. you, Canada's not nearly as bad. So there's a Canada one, there's a Belgian one. I'm gonna I'd love to know the Belgian one, how they found his group. T group the chats. Belgian that's one. unclear. Sentences this guy to one year in prison for found uh, spreading hate. This they got like, a hold of his group chats. Oof. This Buddy, seems like this could be a political persecution. Can you imagine though, you're obviously. fucking messaging with the boys and the fucking door comes in? Mean police! <laughs> the mean police bust down the doors. Yeah. Fucking check your phone and then shit that you've been sending in the boys' group chat. And then now this guy has to go to court where they're. And they're putting on the board shit that's been said in your group chat. Yeah, but he, here's the thing, because he's like a far-right politician. In, uh, on f November 24th, you called this woman a lying bitch. Yeah, there was the hockey player that happened to, actually. Went to the group chats? They some One of his boys, for some reason, released his group chat shit, and he was like making all sorts of inappropriate jokes, and he just got like kicked out of the NHL. What? Yeah, I can't remember who it was. Maybe, fuck, I can't remember who it was, but it happened. I like, do kind of think we fairly, talked about it. Fairly recently, maybe a couple years ago, like he just, I don't know why, but one of his Dude, friends, you gotta be the, such a bitch for a cop. Like, that's Auschwitz guard territory. Stasi <laughs> shit, yeah. You gotta be a, a bitch of a dude to get on meme patrol and then bust down a guy's door. It's like, you know, sometimes when they they have like the, there was like the handicapped toddler in Europe where they, she was said the wrong thing online and the cops were like busting in and then the girl, they were like, she, she can't even she's like autistic yeah, and yeah, she's she like no she's you doing. know what i mean and then they were like she's crying and having like a panic attack and the cops are like trying to put her in the paddy wagon for her like <laughs> online behavior yeah they're like we're the good that's, guys here uh, yeah that's what's if you're if you're a man a grown man and a policeman by that mm -hmm. you know what i mean you're not you know, uh, you're supposed to uphold the law, but I just mean the type of guy that's a cop is a little different than the type of guy that becomes a, for example, Canadian. a sure, but I was gonna even say like a professor of, yeah, yeah, you know, women's a little, a little studies, harder, harder. <clears throat> but professor I, of colonialism, yeah. The Belgium thing, though, is that seems like very likely some sort of political hit job because you know, this is an opponent they were coming after. So, this is some random dude whose group chats. Got him sent to jail. This guy was like an actual politician, far right politician, who. So they're obviously like you know coming after this dude. It is possible that that's how they start, and this is a find me the man, find me the crime. Yeah, but 
this crime is going to be found more and more because it's popping up. Justin Trudeau defends house arrest power for people feared to commit a hate crime in future. So that they think that you even might commit one. Dude, imagine how lame that is. You got a fucking it would be ankle, half a comedy. Dude, you, you got an <laughs> ankle monitor on and you're like, what's, dude, what'd you do? It's like, what's going on? You got an ankle monitor? And like, yeah, the government. They think I'm going to draw a swastika on my yeah. notebook. <laughs> They were like worried that I was gonna say a hate crime. I was. They were worried about me saying hate speech. They thought it was so likely that I was gonna do hate speech. They make sure you that can't I'm go on to any fucking comedy house clubs. arrest. Next is gonna be you're doing weekends for your fucking potential hate speech. Because they know on the weekends is when you have some drinks and it yeah. really starts flowing at the bar. Doing weekends. They put you in weekends every time it's poker night. Yeah. Um, no, I know this is when your football pool ma- yeah, meets, yeah. so we're going to be taking some preemptive measures. We know last time once those wings came, those slurs started flying. Slurs started coming, so there'll be no wings in weekends. The boys got a little rowdy last, you know, last uh, Super Bowl <laughs> Sunday, so we're going to be putting a stop to that. Mental. It's. I mean, it, it is really crazy. My only wonder is once an election in Canada comes about, and uh, you know, it seems like unless they fucking. Pull something. If he lost, do they put a stop to this whole thing? or whatever. If he's just as like, yeah, we're reversing all of this shit, just like how Biden did day one, where he goes, yeah, not doing any of that. That stuff's all over. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's the hope is that there's just that's the whole dude. Imagine point of the party. Imagine he just tra- imagine uh, the Canada guy comes in and he kicks out Trudeau's cabinet, so he's just like wheeling a bunch of people out because they're all like <laughs> handicapped people in wheelchairs and stuff. Like <laughs> he's just ripping wigs off yeah, fucking yeah. dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine the people they kick he kicks them all out at once like the freak show that'd be walking out of that building who <laughs> the the hate speech committee when they have to like leave they you know how when they leave they like escort them outside and they take your you know yeah, yeah they yeah. take your card and put yeah, it out and cut, you gotta escort it out of the building and stuff <laughs> you can imagine the people the one girl just out in her mobility scooter like some lesbian coming out i hope fucking we don't get extra back to canada to face, <laughs> face chargers on these jokes ryan <laughs> Imagine we got ex- full extradition back. Like the U.S. government's like, yeah, we'll send him back. <laughs> we get extradited back. We will put Stay angle monitors trial for the podcast. <laughs> then they start looking at the boys' guys' group chats. Yeah. <laughs> my friend, my friend, my friend. That you know when they took down the mob. Yeah, that's us. They have like me, you. Then they have just like in the thing they have like. Paul, they have me, they have Waldo, like they have this yeah, just yeah, like yeah. entire, yeah, they, and then they just, they get the, they get one group chat attached to another and they just bring down yeah, the yeah, whole yeah, ring. And Eventually have... every man's in prison because there's no man that wasn't in a group chat accused of hate speech. JJ's going to be like the, that one crazy mobster who pretended he was nuts and he was walking around in his bathrobe, <laughs> you know, just like all crazy, like wandering around the streets in his bathrobe and shit. <laughs> yeah, the memes. Just pretending he like <laughs> didn't know where he was. Ah, what's a meme, eh? What's a meme, eh? <laughs> That's the only way you get out of it. They are laying the hammer down, so that's the fucking Cando one, Bill 63, C63. C6, yeah. Designed to curb the proliferation of hate, but also establishes a new hate crime, which would carry a maximum sentence of life in prison. Pretty normal. Pretty <laughs> normal punishment. Like, I'm pretty sure... Life in prison for memes. You get... You... Basically, memes get you the same sentence as Paul Bernardo or Luca Magnata, because there is no true life in prison in Canada. It's 20 years. 25... I think it's 25, and then they could put the dangerous offender designation on you, where you can actually never get out, because they you're, like, classified as a dangerous offender. But technically... They catch you drawing like you know they catch you drawing some slurs on the wall in your fucking office yeah, yeah, yeah. well think about this imagine you went there for hate speech and then you have no choice but to join the white supremacists <laughs> oh the irony the, the, the irony <laughs> they come back you're like dude it was one joke and they come back five years later you got swastikas on you're like i can explain <laughs> I go, look, I had no choice. I go, tell me you don't at least find this a little funny that I did a little joke and now I'm part of the white power brotherhood. Or I, what am I supposed to do? They either said... <laughs> the Aryan brotherhood. The black guys didn't want me to join because I was here for hate speech. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. I tried to go trans to get into the woman's prison, but then they did, they they got wind about the hate speech. No, that stuff. works. Luca Magnata just did that. No, but they got wind of the hate speech oh. stuff, so they didn't want anything to that do with it. That is funny. Me. If like that's like you know how in American prisons, like the worst, the, ultimate the bad worst boy? thing you can be is a <laughs> sex offender in Canada. It's like so the, if you're the, all the hate speech people have to be all sectioned <laughs> off. You know, they did hate speech. That's pretty fucking. That guy's got loose lips, man. <laughs>
He said the F word. Fuck the other F word. Mm. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Yeah. But yeah, I told you that Luca Magnata got. He, he basically so Luca Magnata was the guy don't, that, don't that don't fuck with cats serial killer and JJ was roommates with him for like three years <laughs> yeah and uh, anyway JJ he, said he was smelly uh, I believe it I believe it he looks weird but uh, he and he cut up a guy's body and was mailing it all over the country and then he was like on the run in Europe and they found him in Germany or some shit but anyways he just recently said that he's a woman someone told me that I told you this uh, he said he's a woman now. So he goes, I'm trans, I'm a woman, and he has a boyfriend um, in his jail, and then because he's a woman, they're transferring him to a medium security prison, which is also where Paul Bernardo is, who is... Uh, Was it you that said that they transferred his boyfriend with him? Yeah, because he like needs his boyfriend with him or whatever, so they're, the boyfriend's That's also That's fucking him. hilarious. Yeah, and so anyways, he just, like, it really works. He just goes, I'm trans, and they go, okay, well then we don't want you to... Oh my, I'm so sorry, we, man. Oh, we, man, we don't want you to be in this dangerous <laughs> maximum security prison. With, with all, all the hate speech yeah, people. With all these hate speech people <laughs> and all these hardened criminals. Let's get you to somewhere a little more palatable, ma'am. I'm so sorry, ma'am. Ma <laughs> the future is female. I, I apologize. <laughs> the judge, the, well, it works. the guards and candle lashing each other. It's crazy it works because, you know, five, crazy years, five years ago, if you said, oh, yeah, people are going to like turn trans and they're going to do this, people are like, come on, you're get overreacting. Like, Paul, you know, Luca Magnata is not going to get transferred to a medium security prison because he's pretending. It'd be a good trans. heist movie. What's the highest? You go trans to get into the other oh. thing. To, like <laughs> a serial killer goes breaks, there to break get someone out. Well, I, no, I was more thinking like a serial killer that kills all these women, then they get him in there, and then he says he's trans, goes to the women prison, then kills a mm, bunch more. Genius. Like you can see that happening. You know what I mean? Like a Hannibal thing. Yeah. But you know, like they always have their one final thing, and then they manage to like escape. Yep. That's how they manage to like escape. You know. I like that. I oh. watch up. I can that see it happening. Better than the fucking beekeeper. German police carried out raids on homes of suspected misogynistic hate speech posters. So <laughs> they fit, they think that a guy might have like a you know a poster set up in his room of like yeah, just like the well, future isn't female. It's just like the future isn't female. <laughs> it's okay to be it's, like it's it's, it's okay just like to a be Bruce, white shit. It's just like an old school Bruce Jenner poster. <laughs> like if you were like a decathlon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a dead naming poster. <laughs> Was that that no a no man poster would definitely kicking this bad boy in a high gear people. So if you had a, a, a suck on this Trudeau, <laughs> he is wearing the no man hat. Oh, yeah, yeah, if you just have like a married with children poster up in your house, and the yeah. Germans, oh, what is this? What is this poke high? <laughs> <laughs> they're all they're all on uh, Marcy's side. Oh yeah, yeah. They're one. all wearing like yes Marcy's t shirts. <laughs> yeah, Mar Marcy Darcy. And, and again, they're like a very against Jefferson. They're pro Marcy. <laughs> Did I tell you last time I was in Saratoga Springs and they had like a weird comic con there and she was like one of the headliners, Marcy Darcy? Yeah, <laughs> that's what she's up to, dude. I mean, crazy that people. Was there a big line for Marcy Darcy? I didn't go. I didn't buy tickets to go into the comic con, but uh, it was there that weekend. And like, people, so you're just seeing photos everywhere that like was, Marcy Darcy's a main attraction. Marcy Darcy was like one of the top billings for this like Saratoga Springs. What comic do you think Marcy Darcy fucking clears at a Comic Con? That's honestly what I was wondering because I went and looked up her Okay, I'm going to guess. She hasn't been in a lot of stuff. Okay, I'm going to write my guess down and then you write your <laughs> guess down. Um You can stop typing numbers right. I just well, I just don't want you to <laughs> That's probably uh, I know like I deleted it and typed again. My uh, guess is 6k. For one of them? Like for one, one weekend? weekend? That's what I think Marcy Darcy gets six K. I can't that's if that's the case, that's crazy. What do you think? What'd you write down? Why that's why I, I didn't write it, that's why I made you write it oh, down. I didn't write anything. The reason well, I made you write it down, this is the whole reason I want you to write it down oh. so you wouldn't change your answer well, after you little I, fucking weasel. I, I, I would say fifteen hundred plus accommodations. Okay, so you thought she, Marcy Darcy's fifteen hundred. Dude, it's like there's tons of people there. Who are like like I don't know what, what So you think it's she gets fifteen hundred, but she has to make her up money signing autographs. Uh yeah, it's like pictures and autographs. They're, she's not getting an appearance fee from the thing. It's just she gets she's her, there on her own accord. She gets her, yeah. She just gets her own um, table, and you I think mean, she's made, paying for the booth. No, no. Okay. Here we go. Okay, I get, I found a, a Amanda Beers coming. Look it up. Look up Marcy Darcy appearance fee. It, well, it's, I don't know about it, but it says Saratoga Comic Con will run from ten to six, and Saturday from ten to five uh, at the Saratoga Spring City Center. Uh, no, $23 for single day actor. I don't know how much. No, I think you just get like each person has their own fee 
And like that's how those comic cons work. It's like each person has a different fee. Like William Shatner costs way more money than fucking Amanda Beers from the comic con. From the but you pay and to they get pay the you Comic-Con? to Comic Con and they pay you to be on a panel and stuff. Yeah, I don't know if she was what uh, I got asked to be on some weird panel for some weird ass shit. Yeah, this I don't know about. Uh, I, I have no idea what, what she would charge. I can't imagine it's more than twenty dollars. There's no way someone's paying more than $20 to get a phone. What do you think, Marcy? Marcy Darcy. I think people at home are wonder, realizing why I had to ask him to write it down because I knew he was going to modify it. I don't it. think she's getting a fee. I think she just makes whatever she So makes. zero is what you're saying. Zero. She could theoretically make zero. You think she's what? How much do you think she cleared walking away from their 50, profit, yeah. not including if she sent, sold pictures, not including the materials? Marcy Darcy flies in, not including her flights. Yeah. How much money 15, does Marcy Darcy clear? 1500 I, I just don't think she was that popular where people want to get... Full. He said she was a big draw, though. She was on all the posters, top billing. Yeah, but it's in Saratoga Springs. This is like a fucking D-list like Comic-Con. As far as Comic-Cons go, like nobody's like pumped to be at the Saratoga Springs Comic-Con. You're like have one foot out of show business at that point. I'll tell you, when I was doing Boston, across the street was the Comic-Con or some version of that. Yeah, Boston would the thing be a big was one. fucking packed. Boston is a huge city. Just tons of fucking women wearing weird ass outfits. Yeah, but that's a huge city. Towns, what? Yeah. It's a big college town. Big college town. Like Je this this year's Comic Con, which is in May. I'm looking up Jenna Jameson. Well, obviously those probably that's do a big okay. One. And then a bunch of guys I never know who are like from actual comic people, like who are actually like make comic books. I think because I don't know who any of these people are. Uh, the Red Power Ranger, who's black. Uh, interesting. I think they get paid a fee. You think so? Yes. Maybe. <clears throat> Maybe. I, I would know. bet money on this that you're wrong about this. Maybe. It's possible. I've never been to a Marcy comic. Darcy's walking around, walking out of there with fucking 10K. Okay, Jenna Jameson, photos. autograph 60, selfie 60, combo 80, quotes with an auto plus $10. Uh, let's see who was like people uh, basically autographs start at $40 this guy Laurel this guy is like a anime voice 30 just voices of Daniel Daniel Tiger's neighborhood guy all right 30 I don't know I'm right you're wrong we'll okay. leave it at that uh, all right. uh, I, mean, I have no <laughs> idea I don't know what did Johnny find hold on well, it says uh, typically uh, appearance fees are a few thousand dollars to tens of thousands of dollars Okay, thank you. Okay. I, I mean, if Amanda Beers is making tens of thousands of dollars, I will fucking... I, I just, Jenna Jameson's probably 30 grand, then she walks away from another 20 for her photos Jameson and autographs. Jenna Jameson is in a totally different league as Well, Marcy I gave Darcy. her a totally different league. I gave her one-tenth of the pay. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I put her in at 6K. And then what? And then they get everything that they get in terms of the signings and whatnot on top of it? Uh, maybe there's a vig on the signings. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, just on the topic of speech stuff, I listened to Noam had the girls that uh, the cancel. They're the girl and the guy from Seattle yeah, that I canceled yeah, the I comedy watch, show. I watch that too, yeah. Pretty honestly, Noam from the cellar is the man. Yeah, he's great, and he has like he never gets mad. He t he's like yeah. this is okay. He's like the most like pro Israel Jewish guy, mm -hmm. and he has like Noam Finkelstein and uh, what's that guy's name that was like running for office? He's kind of like a black politician guy. Cornell West. Cornell West. Yeah. Had like a pro Palestine rally in his club, yeah. And he, when they asked him why he did that or whatever, his like thing, he said he was like, "I'm just, I really think I have like the principles of free speech." And he goes, "If I don't have people that I really disagree with, if I don't let them do it, then I'm just lying about being yeah. a free speech guy." So he like, yeah, he's, he, he goes he out of his talks, way, he walks the walk. <laughs> he almost does it more because he's like, he's always like holding himself accountable. Of yeah. Like, am I just putting on speech I like? And he's like, I he goes, I can't say the stuff I say if I'm. Like I can't say that I'm a speech guy. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, so and that is kind of his like main thing, which is good for him. Yeah, he's like well, he runs a comedy club, but I don't. I don't think you'd see a lot of that. I don't think there's very many Palestine people that would let their club have like an Israel thing, or very many Israel people that would let their club have. I Palestine mean, this club thing. in Seattle wouldn't. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So he sort of talked to them, and he had good points because he was sort of saying. They were fucking weasels. You thought they were weasels? They, the chick was like, she's like, I don't know what I'm doing. That was her she whole sort of excuse. Dumb on she it. played dumb. She goes, look, I don't know what I'm doing. So I just made a mistake. I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And you're like, shut up. Well, his, everyone, they, they were getting like a lot of people like hating on them. And they were, he was sort of saying a little bit like, I get that, you know, you're being, you know, everyone's mad at you online and you're, that's a tough thing to go through to some degree. Yeah. And their, their argument was like, this was just supposed to be a private email. But what I thought was the best rebuttal to that, he was like, well, essentially what you're saying to these people 
is they're moral they're like morally they're not acceptable for public society essentially yeah you're kind of saying like hey we know what the you know and they're kind of saying oh we want our clients like which is essentially pc you know safe yeah. comedy and basically you're saying to them you're unacceptable for morally for more morally mm-hmm. and it was like okay well if you say that to someone they're actually right to be indignant about it yeah like you don't get to say hey i think this person's like uh too inappropriate to be here they uh, like that person has a right to, and their fans to now be like well fuck you yeah and you're not like a library that this is the second best point yeah you're yeah. not like a library the book that's like controversial speaker you're a comedy club yes you're not a restaurant that's like hey we just were having someone here and we don't want to get involved in politics you're a comedy club that is now getting involved in politics by picking a side on the thing. Absolutely. Oh, he's a good point. So no, like no, 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 100%. And they, they were like, they did themselves no favors because they thought that this is the best for their uh, like business model long term. And maybe they're right. My guess would be probably not. I, I, well, he, it's what he said. He goes, listen, comedy has a like culture and people really care about the idea of like, that if you're funny, that should be the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Like people do really care about that idea. And if you were in a diff- if you're moving into an industry and kind of saying like, I disagree with everything about this industry, like, and, and you want I want to do things completely different, which is, I don't care if you're funny. I care about yeah. if you're, you know, have the right politics that I have. It's not unreasonable to expect that you're going to get some people mad about that. For sure. I mean, I imagine they wouldn't book Brett Gelman. That club, I I would guess that they would not have Brett Gilman perform there. I would agree with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they and might. he's like the most liberal dude on fucking earth. The guy wears a dress. Well, the, I think the the Palestine stuff is just throwing a fucking wrench. Yeah, in their a massive stick. wrench. But I'm just saying, but they, it, it's they're showing trying to be their, like the kink in their business model. Like, yeah. if you're like, hey, we're trying to please these people, it's like what you're going to realize is that's fucking impossible for sure. And you would have well, sucked Brett Gilman's dick like six months ago. Yeah. Like, to, <laughs> yeah, to play your club, like you would have been beside yourself if he if he would be willing. And all your or Rappaport when all he was or, talking about how Trump's bad, exactly because they like, were going off on Rappaport. Exactly, you would love all that shit, and then now just one little schism, and there was just one issue that differed. And again, they would probably have people showing up. I mean, dude, like Matis Yahoo is like having events canceled now left and right. Like he can barely play shows anymore. What? Dude, it's like all his, because I guess like that's maybe a little hyperbolic. He does playing shows, but he's having a lot of Do you see the guy that said he's not going to take his AIDS medicine for Palestine? Yeah. <laughs> Funny <laughs> protest. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing really more to it. Let's than that, check back on him in four years. He said he has HIV. Let's and he's see. Just, let's see. He's yeah. gonna let it turn into full blown AIDS to protest Israel. Hey man, you gotta do what you gotta do. That's super, <laughs> it's funny, a guy saying like not, himself on. Well, he saw the guy, guy lighting himself. He's not gonna wear a condom to protest Palestine. If I get something, I get something. Well, that's just like he probably saw the guy lighting himself on fire, and then he's probably like, "Fuck, I'm that's not a, doing." Well, that's not a pretty that. flamboyant gay thing to do, right there. He goes, oh. <laughs> "He goes, well, not that." Oh, fucking queen, that guy is lighting himself on fire. So Matt is Yahoo's getting crushed. Well, he's just like he keeps on having all these shows canceled because. He had these shows in, I think it was like New Mexico. Does he even do a lot of politics or just go play his songs and what he says online they don't like? Uh, I think he's just, he's so, yeah, I mean, he has songs about how Israel's sick. Like he's well, lyrics. that's his deal. He's a that, fucking of rabbi, course that's basically. His deal. Yeah, that's his deal. But and everybody what do they loved, expect him to be. Well, everybody loved him, but then they don't like how he's just still. Well, Israel's Israel. in the chopping block right now, right? And, dude, like in anyways, he, he posts shit. He's like, I'm a Zionist. I'm pro Zionism. Like he's all that stuff, right? And so I guess some of these gigs in uh, New Mexico, just the staff was like, we're not showing up for these, right? They're like, we're not showing up to work. We're not working an event that he's playing so then the venues were like well we have no staff we can't do the shows and then i guess other places were seeing that this is a viable thing and so now all these staff are kind of just protesting and they're just like, not showing up and that is yeah he was fucking sick though yeah he's the man I, like I don't know about i don't know about all his stuff he's saying but yeah i don't know i just like his music <laughs> yeah music's sick <laughs> But uh, anyways, yeah, he's like uh, he's having all these shows canceled. Imagine, don't imagine he pulled a reverse Neil Young and he goes, "I'm taking my music off all of the platforms that aren't owned by Jews. <laughs> <laughs> I'm removing my music from all Palestinian Palestinian owned platforms. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be the easiest protest you could do. Yeah, shwar- shwarmify. <laughs> no more music on shwarmify. <laughs> that, that would definitely be not the hardest <laughs> protest to do. No, no, not too bad. So I also want to talk about this. Um, the social security thing too a bit Uh because i don't know if you saw basically so ben shapiro among other people but have posted kind of a big issue is with all the entitlements and the social security stuff yeah 
the gist of it is there's kind of not enough money, right? Yeah, they've been saying that forever. There's though. a Ponzi. Well, it's true. So I actually, me and you usually kind of disagree on this stuff a little bit. So I wanted to hear what you think because yeah. basically the Ponzi scheme is people pay in all this money. And then when they turn out, when they reach a certain age, they get more than the present value of they paid out essentially, yeah, right? Yeah. And that's kind of been going on in a lot of countries for a long time. And but it's just, and it is a Ponzi scheme because people are paying into it and then just it's getting paid out. And the Democrats, their solution to some degree is like mass immigration. Yeah. You know, I, th- I think that none of them say that because a lot of people say, oh, the reason that they have so many people moving in is because, you know, eventually they'll vote Democrat, which is probably part of it. But I think also I- another part of it is that they're like, these people will eventually will naturalize them, make them pay taxes, and then finally we... And then the tech people kind of think, which I agree with more, probably the only way out of this solution is to, uh, you know, just have massive innovation. So... I actually didn't, and I don't know if this is true, but I saw Elon Musk tweet about it, and I didn't see any community note on it, so I'll assume it's true, but, because I always was very much, people were like, oh, they're importing them because they want Democratic voters, and I'm like, these people are not going to be able to vote for a very long time, and I never really subscribed to that, but, and this is kind of an interesting thing, is that when they take the census, they do count people who are illegally here on the census, right? Like, and the census... Uh, dictates how many, like, I guess, congressional seats you get or, like, seats in your district. So if you do actually have a huge influx of illegal people, then because you have more people... Well, I'm not denying outright that. I'm just saying... I never knew that. I think that there's multi-purpose. That actually does make sense where you get... You'll have more... I mean, to some degree, if your birth rates... So that is very true. But if Uh, your... Sounds true. If if your uh, birth rates aren't high enough, the Ponzi scheme doesn't work, right? For sure. So okay. I mean that was my conspiracy then, about Roe v. Wade. And then all these what was your conspiracy about Roe v. Wade? That they've repealed Roe v. Wade because people aren't having kids fast enough to, hmm, to replace okay. them. And so they were like, look, we gave you the chance to have kids, you're not doing it. We're getting rid of abortions. We're just gonna force your hand on this. Okay. To some degree. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then so the kind of it's like a lot of these things are like futile efforts you know what i mean they'll basically say like we're gonna tax billionaires more and all this stuff and someone kind of did an analysis of us and there's like if you tax the maximum amount of every billionaire in the world it would make one percent of the dent in this yeah like it's not even it's not even part of the conversation of possible solutions the only possible solution is like massive like middle class taxation uh-huh. sort of thing uh-huh. which you know, uh, no one wants to say that. No one ever wants to say like, "Hey, I'm here. My platform is I'm raising taxes on, on your average cl- man." Yeah, yeah, fuck no. <laughs> right. I mean, that'll never fly. Well, this is the thing, though, and this is kind of just like backing up from the argument. It is a bit of like the, the other argument is they're like, "Well, let's make them retire later." But you kind of did have a Ponzi scheme where people that are like uh, a certain age, basically. They printed a ton of money, Mm -hmm. made policies to inflate the housing, which inflated their amounts, and then now they're kind of like receiving a retirement that is a bill paid by the next generation that can't pay that bill. Yeah. So what? that's the problem that you're in. So it's like, I don't know what ex- like what exactly the solution is. It's like you either no matter what whether you print money, whether you raise taxes, you either have to decide at some point like, hey, is the generation that did this paying this bill or is the people who are 35 now paying this bill? Like one of the two of those kind of has to happen. I mean, the ultimate if you're a politician I mean, deflate the fucking housing market, then at least you have to meet in the middle where you're like, hey, let's stop like propping up the housing market, have those things bring down and then then you want to raise tax on people. You go, okay, that's fair. We're like going half and half on this. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> there I, th- isn't a great I, I think every politician though. just, especially like if you're the president, you just want to basically do nothing and just punt the ball to the next guy and be like, hey, well, the, you're, ideally they just do not, they kind of hem and haw and then nothing. That's when they say it, that it's kind on. of like a Coke bender and they're just like, what we're going to try to do is take another line. I mean, this is, you know, I don't know what the amount of money in social security is. It's probably like fucking trillion. I'll tell you what isn't the answer is like massive, you know, kind of regulation on growth because that might be the only, one of the only ways out of this. No, and if you want to like r- lower the value of homes, you can either create more supply, which is hard, well, or, or just stop doing all the stuff that's inflating. Or you them. can just crank up the interest rate, which has insane effects on a million other things. So you're like, yeah, you can do that, but you're gonna literally have a million other problems. That's as far as I understand. There's not really many. Well, but you can just stop doing the stuff that's inflating them. Like for example, like stop making it so hard to build them 
I know, but you, yeah, you can, and you know, Canada, I think to a degree, because Canada is getting really fucked on this, like way more. Where fix this real estate. Problem. There's so fix many people coming into problem. the country, and they're just like it's so slow to build places. Well, Toronto's so, impossible. So to build much red somewhere. tape, and they're trying to be like, you know, we're clear in the red tape. But you're like, it still, just takes time to build homes. Like that is the bottom, like in and of itself. Like this isn't China, where that I don't know how they. Maybe they should go to China and figure out how they do that because they'll put up a fucking high rise in like a week. Okay, we're talking about two different problems. Yeah. I'm just saying that, like, it, all all being equal, like there isn't a really good solution for Fuck this one. No, I don't fix social security problem. I have no clue, man. That's way above my pay grade. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I, I don't know how they would. I don't know what their shortfalls are. You're you're right. I, I guess is maybe, what's going to happen is going to keep kicking the can down the road. That's what they always do. They've been talking about this since like I've been following politics. The problem with Social Security is that there's not going to be enough money, and it's going to run. There's out. currently not enough. I, I guess they could just print more money. They do it for every other problem. Well, but that's kind of what you're doing. You're just basically saying everyone's this is everyone's money's worth less. Or they get someone, or they invest it better. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, I will say America does have one thing that they can really do. Bitcoin. But, well, they have a lot of land that they could theoretically sell off crown land. I mean, America has so much land that they own that it's probably worth a fucking fortune. See, these are some out of the box type of solutions. I but just, again, it might still not make a dent. Well, the problem is, is a lot of money. So there's a the lot land. of people showing up with a big generation being like, I want I'm getting a hundred grand a year. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the problem is who buys the land, right? Like, you don't want to sell the land to China, right? Maybe China shows up and they go, we'd love to buy your land. You go, no, we don't want to do that. There's probably a lot of countries where you go, we'll we, buy don't some. E we don't even want to sell you the land, right? And then so, I mean, but the America is sitting on, a, you know, an insane amount of resources and land. Well, it might take those but type that's of boxes. But that's probably like a last-ditch scenario that they'd want to do because you don't ever get that back. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, we didn't solve it. We didn't solve the social security problem. <laughs> We're going to talk. This Haiti thing's crazy, too. We're going to talk about that on the Patreon because it's been a while now and my phone won't stop oh, going off. But okay. patreon.com slash the boys cast. But I want to tell people that has been like a really cool time for comedy and comedy specials. And I did my show in Calgary and everyone came out. We did four sold out shows. It was like really cool. Um, and it was like. I think it's going to be awesome, but it's uh, there's a lot of uh, specials. So a buddy of ours, Dan St. Germain, just released his special on his YouTube channel, or actually on the, uh, it was on the other YouTube channel. Let me just get it right. Um, so if, if you like listening to stand-up comedy specials, um, check out this one, um, Dan St. Germain. Fuck, where's the special? And he's going to be on The Bathhouse. Which would have been two days ago, but you can watch that on my channel. He'll be on the channel. Check it out. Um, hold on, I want to find out exactly which channel it's on. Um, it was on the eight hundred pound yeah, gorilla yeah, yeah, yeah. channel, and there's a lot of people that release pretty cool specials there. But also, a cost just released his yeah. special, and he's pandering to me a little bit by having a bunch of hot Indian girls dancing at the beginning <laughs> of it. <laughs> Yeah, we might. He knows, we'll what, ask him. he knows what you like. We might try to have a caution on the boys cast. And then um, also Soder, Soder, uh, uh, Are You Garbage? Yeah. Uh, Foley's already came out. Uh -huh. And then the other Ryan, one's Ryan, uh, uh, Kevin's is coming out uh, today. Yeah. I but think it's we, like Kevin Ryan Foley on the Are You Garbage channel. Akash, Dan Soder. I, I tweeted that Dan we should Sinjermin. probably stop calling them specials. I know you're always ta taking shots, but... I'm not taking shots at anybody. I think it's... Uh, nothing see, wrong with I comedy. do get I, the... I, I like the format. I'm I do like, get the point where people are like, there's so many, but it's like, they're only an hour. If you like listening to comedy specials, that's sick that I'm they not come saying out. people shouldn't make them. I'm saying we shouldn't call them specials. Well, that was what do like you want to call them? I don't albums? know. Well, I mean, it's like when a band comes out with an album, like yeah. if you're kind of saying like, well, it didn't come out on a major label. I don't no, I'm not saying that at all. I don't care where it comes out. What are you saying? They're just, they were called specials because they were like very rare because they could only come out on HBO or some shit like 30 years ago. Or yeah, but ago. albums can only albums. come out on a uh, fucking, you know, uh, yeah, insert albums, record label. <laughs> well, yeah. True. Could only come out on well, albums more what's an Interscope before, and then there was independent labels, and people could well, release could, albums. And there's probably an album coming out every day. You could press your own album. No, there's probably a f million albums coming out. At some point, it was very, very difficult to make yeah, an album. Yeah, yeah. And for then sure. now it's not. And to me, that's better if you yeah. like music. No, for sure. And if you like, there's comedy, never been a better time to be a comedy fan than right. Yeah, now. if you're into comedy and uh, people release specials every year or two, but it's like it's special because you don't release it every day. You come out with one every two two years. That's true. So if you're following this person, and they release a special every two years like mm. that is kind of a special thing if you've been a special, fan for a guy them, if yeah. you've been a fan for a guy for five years he's done it twice that's true 
Yeah, that is true. I, don't know, I think yeah. it's I think it's like cool. Yeah, no, I mean it's awesome. But uh, listen, I'll, I'll get your point, and you're being funny. You're a comedian. No, 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 I'm not taking shots. You're a comedian, and you're being funny. <laughs> I'm doing comedy. It does jokes. seem like if if you are like they do seem to be coming out more than normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But for that sure. is that is going to end because a lot of comedians are releasing their first one. Yeah, and then it's going to be like. Well, that was all my material. <laughs> yeah, that was 25 years worth of material. Yeah, so that's a lot of these people releasing their first specials. You're like, he's been working on that for 10 years. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It is crazy sometimes when you see someone be like, this is my first special. And you're like, how long? He's been doing comedy for 15 years. Yeah. Godfrey is just doing one. He hasn't done a special in 10 years. That guy's been one of the really? top comedians in the world for yeah. ever. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I figured he'd be cranking him out. Uh, no. Interesting. Yeah, so I'm on the side that it's good that a lot of specials are coming out. Danny, I am also on the side. Danny's on the side. <laughs> Danny's on the I side. On the side. <laughs> Same side. <laughs> it's just such an indefensible position. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm anti comedy. Uh, Danny's an <laughs> anti comedy comedian. <laughs> Patreon.com/slash/the-boys-cast. Peace.